about that time. Hey, I'm on East Oakland time. Either eat or get fed to the line. Came from the bottom with the grind. Real town biz, I'm a problem in my prime. I go stupid, that Bentley, my new scrape thing. Checking the telly, give them the fake name. Where I'm from, if you got it, they try to take things. Uh, now I make it do a backflip. Try to play me, probably end up with a fat lip. Uh, and you know I got a stack shit. So you know what time it is if I tap I rip. And it's about that time, it's about that time I looked up, and it's about that time It's about that time, yeah, yeah, yeah Ready, set, go Had to let them know that I'm saying whoa I looked up, and it's about that time It's about that time, it's about that time It's about that Each one of these men, all alignment, will simulate pass blocking. The fullback, who is the draw runner, if it's a draw right, will key the offensive right guard. If the offensive right guard takes his man to the right, he will run that draw play to the inside. You hope that you get an opportunity to make a play, and you believe with every ounce of your being that when that opportunity comes, you will make it. Some point tonight, adversity strikes, but we strike back. I think I got my swagger back. Oh, oh, oh. Falcon fans, come one, come all. It is time for another edition of Thursday Night Football, brought to you by the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club. Your Falcons are here, live at the Ford Center, set to take on the Frisco Centennial Titans. What a day, what a matchup we have here. It's nice to play indoors in these August temperatures. I think right now we are five minutes from kickoff, still 95 degrees outside, but a beautiful 76 degrees inside mini Jerry World, as some call it. I'm Justin Smith, bringing you the action live from Frisco. We have fabulous Fabricio Salas, twisted and tweaking on the board tonight. Josh, the electrician, is going to be working the camera. Harvey's back in town with stats. We'll be bringing you all kinds of numbers and whatnot. Tips is on the sideline. But right now, I'd like to welcome in the color commentator and my beloved co-host, Cameron Hobbs. What's going on, buddy? How are you, pal? Man, I'm fired up to be here in... Mini Jerry's role, as you said, home of our America's team, Dallas Cowboys, your favorite team, if you will. I don't know. And about that. Uh, everybody's favorite team in America. Man, what a game. What a setting. Thursday night football. Not used to this one. It's been a while since we've had a Thursday night game, and we are here. You know, we've actually uh, we've been here for a little while as we just watched the Falcons uh, come out of the tunnel. Centennial came out of the tunnel. We're about to have a coin flip coming. Uh, we'll bring you all that action. But th this feels a little different, Cameron. This feels a little different. We've been here setting up for pro about an hour. And, Josh, if you want to pan over to the owner suite real quick, Jerry Jones, I believe, was live here 
at the star for a little while. That was neat. I feel like it gave a different energy to the building, wouldn't you yeah, say? Yeah, I almost went and knocked on his door to see if he'd sign me tonight, you know, to a, to a player contract, thinking I'd get me a job. But unfortunately, that didn't work out. Yeah, so. What a waste of time that would have been for everybody involved. Yeah. But as we look now to midfield, the coin toss is on the way. Captains tonight for the Falcons, number 45, Tanner Moon, number 24, middle linebacker Riley Griffin. It looks like a couple other numbers that I'm <laughs> having a hard time seeing. So we got right Xavier now. Rodriguez out there. Xavier Rodriguez X is down there. He had a good game. And of course, Cade Bortnum, the senior quarterback, is down there as well. Before we get the results of this coin toss, I would like to throw it down to the sideline to Adam Tips. Tips, do you read me? All right, we'll keep it up here in the booth <laughs> as we wait <laughs> for Tips to get settled there. I know he's got the. Big game jitters. I think he might be on mute there, Tips. And nope, nope. So we'll, uh, we'll wait here. Can we get a ref mic? We might pod that up and see the results of this coin toss. As this is going to be a tough matchup for the Falcons. Centennial won last week. Team this. Oh, Frisco no. Centennial will receive. All right. Y'all got me. Tips, yes, got yes, you. yes. What's up, guys? Frisco Centennial will receive the opening kick, and uh, I would ask you how the weather is down there, Tips, but I think we all know the answer to that, right? It's about, what, 72 and nice and chill inside after last week's 101-degree kickoff, so it's a lot better down here. I think we had it worse in the press box than you, though, man. I, 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 yeah, whatever. I mean, I would <laughs> rather be in the press box, but, you know, it is what it is. Um, I, I really like being on the field, so, uh, oh, National Anthem, so. Yep. We're going to step aside for the National Anthem. And then we'll be right back with some action. All right, folks, we're back here at Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. And Tips, 
I mean, from up here looking at it, does it look like there's too a big of a crowd on the Centennial side tonight? I think there might be a little bit of traffic. No, it's actually pretty thin, but I mean, we're <laughs> we're. I mean, when it comes to those Thursday night games, we're pretty much used to that. A lot of the times, uh, like Centennial, even the Falcons, it looks like to me the Falcons have a better turnout than Centennial does. Yeah. Well, I know we do have a coach's interview if we want to throw it to that real quick before we get started on this kickoff. Um, Tips was able to sit down with Coach Young. So before we get started here, folks, we're going to throw it to the Coach Young interview. So with head coach, Coach Young, so, Coach, last week you were a little upset with some of the penalties that were happening. Um, is that some stuff that you kind of looked at this week? Oh, yeah, that's a, that was a huge emphasis this week, just cleaning up, you know, what we do and how we – just the execution, you know. That was that was a, a big disappointment for game one. Hopefully they uh, – hopefully game two it's a lot better. And then with Centennial this week, we've seen it like we were talking about a second ago. Three straight years of you having to deal with that running back. He's a beast. Uh, Kansas commit. What do you got to do tonight to stop him? Uh, we got to be very gap sound. Um, and, and, yeah, we've been working on that because they come out in some different formations and just knowing what, where, where your gap is and then staying in your gap. Our defensive line has got to do a great job of getting off blocks and maintaining their gap so the linebackers can fill. And, um, we got to get, we got to, we got to put a hat on him. He's not going to come down with an arm tackle. And then one thing a lot of fans wonder is like, how do you actually, well, come up with the decision to, like, pooch kick versus, like, an actual kickoff attempt, kicking it deep. Like, what goes into your decision-making there? Who's back there? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. I mean, um, sometimes sometimes you'll see somebody that's sitting on the wing that doesn't look very athletic. You know, you think maybe, you know, you might drop it. or you just, First off, he's probably not going to get a very good return. But if they got dudes back there, we're not we, – we prefer not to kick to their dudes. Um, and another thing, you come to the Ford Center, there's all this – big hoorah with it being Jerry's little home. Have you talked to the, the guys this week to kind of like break them in, know what kind of situation they're getting themselves yeah. into? Oh, we've been talking about it all week. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful environment. It's, it's absolutely amazing to come here. But there is, it is a little bit overwhelming. And when the game starts, the noise is so much more than what it is outside, regardless of the band's playing or not. It's, it's just always loud in here. And then there's a lighting situation. The lights are a little bit different than what they're used to. So we got here plenty early just so the kids can get acclimated to the, to the environment. So hopefully it doesn't bother us too much. All right. And then uh, I'll end it off with another football question. Uh, the defense, we saw the three-man front. The linebackers will kind of walk down to help out. B said they'll also get out and help in coverage. What are you expecting your offense to be able to do with that look? Um, we just, it's, 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 they do so many things defensively, different fronts, different blitzes uh, from everywhere, inside, outside. Um, and that's what we've been working on all week. It's just picking up those those guys on, that fit our scheme. Uh, so we've had a good week of practice, so I, I feel pretty good. Weird question. What's your favorite color? Green. No, good answer. Weird. Yeah, well, I went to high school. Uh, it's kind of funny. I went to high school. We were Kelly Green as well. It's always been my favorite color. So it's always worked out for you? Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. All right, we're back. And that was a little uh, unorthodox, right? Playing the Coach Young interview live during the opening drive for Frisco Centennial as they were able to pick up a few yards. I know those of you at home can watch on YouTube and you were able to see those plays happen. So bear with us through that. We're still getting our sea legs about us throughout the early goings of this season as well. But I think we did a, a, a great job. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting this broadcast going. And that opening drive so far for Centennial I mean, it's going to be a lot of that, folks. It's going to be a lot of number five. Get ready for Harry Stewart. He is the name going around town up in that centennial part of the world. He's the guy. Number five, they're running back. They also have a fantastic uh, wide receiver, Brett Eskilden, as well. If you uh, watched last year, you remember that name, I'm sure. So, Yep, he's on the sideline right now, gives him treatment for his shoulder, however. So we're going to see, see if he can get back in the game throughout this one, Smitty. Um, but, yeah, the name of the game is going to be stop the running back today. First and 10 from the 17. It's Stewart once again. He breaks a tackle inside the 15, driven out of bounds by number 24, Riley Griffin, senior linebacker. And as we go through some of these starters real quick, going with your linebackers, corners, and safeties, we've got Ja'Carrion Jackson starting number one. Number 14, Christian De uh, Daquin, DeQuaquin. Linebacker Darius Frushani Duncans. Riley Griffin at linebacker, Xavier Rodriguez at linebacker, and we will continue after this play. Shotgun formation, couple tight ends. It's Stewart, bounces it right. 
Makes a couple men miss. He's down doing near the five. He's got enough for a first down, driven out of bounds by number eight, Tony Butler. And they're going to have to come up after this drive somebody with some way to stop him and be able to contain this running back as he is a very big downhill runner. Um, coming back to the to the starting starting defense here, we've got Tony Butler, number eight, number two, Jalen Brooks, number 45, Big Tanner Moon, number 35, Jerry Irvin. At nose tackle, we got Humphrey Kakuba, and at right end, we got number 33, Noah Wright. All right, there are your starters for this Falcon defense. Jacarian Jackson made a big time touchdown saving play earlier in this drive. Let's see if somebody can come up big here, and they do. Is. Met him at the line of scrimmage. Who else? Number Z number three, Xavier Rodriguez. I mean, he's been a big time player since last year to this year. That's X. Throw up them X's. I mean, Throw up the X. He's going to be a, him and Riley Griffin. It's going to have to be them as linebackers to stop this running back today and get, and get in there and get between tackles. You know, the Falcons against their opponent last week, Greenville, they gave up a big play on the first drive. In fact, it was the second play from scrimmage. They gave up a touchdown. I want to say it was something to the likes of 85 yards, 90 yards yeah. almost. And, uh, you know, didn't give up a single point the rest of the game. So this unit just got to get a little warm, got to get out there, got to get the so jitters it. out as it's a quick screen pass one-on-one. -on -one. And the Falcons stop them at the two-yard line. That was number 21. Defending that play, Lawson Nichols, the junior defensive back. Man, he had a lot of open space ahead of him, but he had a defender in front of him. Was trying to shake him, just couldn't do it. Good for Lawson Nichols, able to stop him right there. Number 11, Jacob Stover, had the reception on that play for the Titans. You're going to hear that name quite a bit as well. They have an interesting setup here. You're going to see a lot of tight ends with the Titans, but the skill players are where all their magic is happening. You got a skilled in, you got Stover, of course you got big number five, Harry Stewart, as this is gonna be a toss to the left, and he's gonna be swallowed up in the backfield by this Falcon defense. Behind the line of scrimmage, huge play on third down. That was a huge stop, and there was a lot of white jerseys right there when number five got that ball, Smitty, and they've gotta to continue to do that and hold strong to stop this running back. On comes the kicking unit for the Titans, it looks like number 57 is the kicker second that's, week in a row. That's a big kicker. That is the second week in a row we've had opposing kickers wearing numbers in the 50s. Let's see what Jackson Dawson can do as he steps up and boots it through the uprights. The Titans take an early 3-0 lead, but what a win for this Falcon defensive unit. That was almost a block, too. Let's note that. Watch that. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Lake Dallas football fans, we've got a winning lineup of sponsors, including Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting, local business-minded teammates supporting the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the trenches to the end zone, they're in the game. It's nitrogen services, heavy machinery, hydraulics, and equipment rentals. They've got every position covered. Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting, playing their part in the playbook of community support. A great smile leaves a lasting impression, and at Corinth Orthodontics, that's exactly what they specialize in. Call Corinth Orthodontics at 940-321-3919, and don't forget, your smile is their passion. Welcome back to the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast. Here we go. Falcons trail early in this one, 3 nothing with 8.31 here to go. In the first quarter, big play. Harry Stewart was able to rattle off uh, quite a few yards. They went 62 yards, but then they were stopped inside the 10. Big plays by the Falcon defense. Uh, here we go. Let, let's see what this Falcon offense can do once they get out on the field after the ensuing kickoff. Back deep to receive. Who do we got back there? Is that X? That's X. And Xavier Rodriguez. Not quite a pooch. Back deep to receive. And it's going to be caught on the far side of the field near the 20. He's past the 30. Past the 20 or the 35 and brought down near the 40. Who was That's that, That's where the Tips? Falcons are going to take was over. Was that Brockle? That was, yeah. He just he caught the ball and ran straight downhill. That's what you got to do on those kickoffs. It's the best way to get something crazy unless you have a miracle cut back across the field type play. But other than that, most of the time it's catch the ball, plant your foot, and get going. Hey, tell me what you were seeing on that strong side while you were down there. You had closer action. Yeah, so basically what was happening with us on uh, defense there, they'll go strong side, which means there's no receiver. So it's empty set on one side, strong side with the, the run game, and our corners are having to walk up and be a sealer. And that's what happened on one of those big plays. Just missed the tackle there. 
off left side. Dylan Brockle, he's met by a wall of Titan defenders. Man, it's, we got we to have this offensive line sure up. They did a great job last week of, of creating some open holes for the running backs, uh, both Brockle and Sam McAfee, who has actually lined up as receiver again tonight in the slot. Absolutely. Um, but we got to get this line to, to block. Brockle had two touchdowns last week. Big game from him. McAfee, the leading rusher last week with 86 yards. Uh, Brett Young had a great game last week. 98 yards receiving. He mm -hmm. found the end zone as well. And uh, 76 yards for the star wide receiver, Keonde Henry. As this is another handoff up the middle. It's Brockle. He pushes hard for about five yards, and it's going to bring up third down and five. That's a good little chunk to gain a little bit back that you lost on that last play. And, uh, man, want to see, see what we can do here. Maybe go in the air a little bit. Maybe, maybe trust your quarterback to put it in the hands of one of his playmakers down there, whether it be McAfee or Keonde Henry or, you know, Brett Young, which are those, those are your three starting receivers right there, folks. And Cameron, remember we were watching Inner Squad. We were talking about the tight end stiffer back set. Mm -hmm. So watch this be a little cross here, maybe a five-yard dump off, a little easy first yeah. down here. Yep. And you do have Jacob Simmons in, too, at that sniffer. Oh, no, you didn't. Sorry. I saw, I saw three. Brockle. Handed off to for the third time in a row, and he's going to be swallowed up at or behind the line of scrimmage. Excuse me, folks, that was Davin Hopkins. I thought it was an eight, it was a three. You know, believe it or not, Cameron, Davin Hopkins, sophomore linebacker. He plays a little offense as well. Plays a little bit of that sniffer back. Plays a little bit of that sniffer back, and he was a player last week. Yep. He was a big-time player. In fact, I have him circled on my roster as the Falcons' key to the game. Yep. If they can get him moving a little bit, I mean, he's, he's kind of an unexpected force. I, I certainly didn't expect it last week when we took on Greenville. As this is going to be a high snap, Mitchell White on to punt, and he gets it off. It's a line drive. What a punt. Fielded at the 14-yard line, forcing him to go to his left, and Great he's shot. brought down at the 19. Great job on special teams, leading the charge. Charles McCullough, the senior wide receiver, making a play. Smitty, I don't want to speculate here, but it's looking like Brett Eskildon is not going to be coming back in this game. They've got his pads off, got a sling on that shoulder. That is huge, and you hope everything works out for that young man. The last thing you want to do is see any of these student athletes go down with an injury. But in terms of how things could play out for the Falcons in this game, the Titans are going to be missing one of their top weapons. They, they run this pistol a lot. It's an option, a true option, as he went to his left and he picked up quite a few yards down to the 33-yard line. It's going to be enough to move the chains on first down. Man. Harry Stewart making it happen. I don't think we saw them do that at all, Tips, did we? No, they did it a couple times, but a lot of times we saw it was just get the ball. <laughs> out of his hands real Just quick get too. the ball out yeah. and l just run downhill. So they actually did more of an option there. Yeah, we did not see that at all on film from last week's game. Man, got to sure that up. Current Hill. The defensive end on this right side or nearest to us if you're watching on YouTube, the bottom of your screen. I mean, these defensive ends are going to have to contain. They're going to have to get out on the edge as it's a quick slant pass caught by number three, Ramsey Meters. He's met by Jakarian Jackson, and it's a great, great tackle. But, man, right here on the second down, you know they're going to run. You know they're going to run right here, so your defense has got to get in there and stop this running back. Yeah, second and short, absolutely. I would imagine we're going to see the ball put on the ground here, but they don't look like they have any fear of moving it through the air. They don't, and that's what they I mean, they sure up the air, the air play by running it so much. Pistol formation. you got two tight ends on the line of scrimmage. I mean, that's the play, though, right? It's going to be a handoff. we got a flag on the field. Harry Stewart's going to get across the 45, driven out of bounds. Enough for the first down. Man, is was Jacarion Jackson offsides is my question. Got to see what's going on with this flag. It's either that or illegal formation, in yeah. my opinion. So, I mean, it just depends what happened with that tight end, if he's on the line or not. Because remember, we were looking, and well, I kind of called two, it out. two tackles, if you want to call them that, oh, yeah. off the line. Yeah, it's like a tackle over. So, it, this could be a formation problem here. And I was watching a lot of film. I was like, that's got to be illegal formation. So, we should see. Looks like offsides. Looking for the white hat. All sides. Defense. Defender was lined up at the neutral zone to snap. Yep. The penalties declined. Result of the play is a first down. First down, Titans, as they have the ball in the 46-yard line. And I think I think it was, I mean, it, it was on the line, but, man, watch Shakira and Jackson because he came to play man. I thought he was pushed up a little too much as well. So that's something to watch as well through this game. See, right down there you see the replay. That's kind of spotty. It was close. I don't know. I don't know. 
Quick pass, right side. Oh, oh, big hit there. Xavier Rodriguez lay in the wood. That was big time. Number 11, Jacob Stover for the Titans. Bobbled that ball a little bit, did not have time to adjust. And Xavier Rodriguez let him have it. Well, he was absolutely just laid out there by Xavier Rodriguez. So I wouldn't, I mean, I don't think anybody would be able to catch that ball and hit that hard. It's tough. I mean, boy, he came in hot. <laughs> I mean, wow. That's high school football, folks. <laughs> That's how we do, huh? Xavier Rodriguez, Riley Griffin, and number six, Darius Duncans. They're your big linebackers for the Falcons. And these guys got their work cut out for them. Timeout, Frisco Centennial. And we're going to take out. one with them. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Fair Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Out of the half. We'll be right back with Lake Dallas Falcons football and the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast. T.W. Hicks is your resource for high quality, cutting edge industrial flooring solutions. Need decorative commercial flooring or long lasting floors for heavy manufacturing? Is moisture or damaged flooring affecting your workplace productivity? Or are you looking to build a new facility from the ground up? No matter your situation, T.W. Hicks Incorporated will meet your needs and surpass your expectations. Call 940-498-3444. Welcome back to the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast. All right, second down and 10 for the Titans. It's another option out to that same side. Riley Griffin on the tackle, Jacarian Jackson helping him out a little bit. Man, I think... Right now, if you're in that, if you're on that sideline as an offensive player, you got to figure out a way to, to rally your players and say, "Hey, these guys are going to come down. They're going to try to score on us every single play, whether it be field goal or touchdown." And because they they are marching right now, we've got to find a way to answer. Yeah. I know it's early, but that's yeah, third I saw down. Cade. Cade was patting some shoulder pads, saying, "Hey, let's get in it, get back into it." And uh, he was having a conversation. So it looks like he maybe had a pass option on one of those run plays, and so he had a conversation with his uh, quarterback coach there. Third and two with four minutes left to go here in the first quarter of this one. It's going to be a handoff left side, and Harry Stewart's going to have enough to punch forward for a first down. That'll move the chains for the Titans. Man, I thought Tanner Moon was going to catch him for a second, and he was trying. Three nothing. The Titans lead in the early goings of this one. So far, uh, I mean, outside of one nearly 50-yard pass play, Harry Stewart has been the majority of their offense right now. He's got seven rushes for 31 yards on the ground. And uh, he's, you know, averaging four yards a carry and doesn't show any signs of slowing down. This Falcon defense is going to have to find some way to contain that edge, especially yeah. on those option plays. Shotgun snap, drops back, fires, quick pass. Left side caught by number three, Ramsey Meters. And he's going to have a pickup of five yards on that play. One thing I want to see Jacarian Jackson work on, man, is he's, he kind of tackles up high. I want to see him go low and wrap up a little bit, take him down immediately, because it could have been easily a missed tackle and that receiver got taken off. Luckily, he had a little bit of help there um, from, from, I think it was Xavier Rodriguez there with him, correct? But he had some help from another player, and man, we got to see him wrap up a little bit lower on those tackles. Yeah, you got Jacarian Jackson on the near side, along with safety number 21, Lawson Nichols. Hand off up the middle, it's Harry Stewart. He reverses field, he's got one man to beat on that side as great pursuit by this Falcon defense. Great pursuit because if he would have marched forward, he had one defensive back to beat. I wanna say it was number two, Jalen Brooks getting in there and at least making him change direction so the rest of the Calvary could come help out a little bit. Yeah, as he kicks outside, he had so much green grass there, so for them to be able to catch him was huge on stopping him because he could have he could have gone a long, long ways. 2.35 here to go in the first quarter. Falcons trail 3-0. Pistol formation, the snap handoff, Harry Stewart, and he's swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. Second down and 11. Man, number six, Darius for Rushani Duncans. About got in there and hit him pretty hard, but he ends up missing the tackle, unfortunately. He's gonna go to the sideline real quick and get him a little breather. Yeah, Darius kind of hobbling off a little bit there. He's gonna get looked at. Hopefully it is just a breather. Uh, on 
the field now in place of Darius. I, I see Riley Griffin down there. I see Xavier Rodriguez down there. Who's that linebacker? Is it 29? 25. 25. 25. Okay, I'm sorry. That's Corbin Bailey. Corbin Bailey. Senior linebacker. As quarterback scrambling a little bit, oh. and Tanner Moon going to bring him down. That's a sack. Big time sack. That's a sack lunch, if you will. He was due, because last week, man, he was all over the place, and it was just about time he finally broke through. Man, he's one of those slimmer built kind of defensive linemen that's able to get over there and be kind of quick and fast and get around those get around those linemen. So, man, what a good first sack of the season for him. Right, the first one? Way one? to win the play there, Tanner Moon. You're having to fight that tackle, play in, play out, and you just won – one one right there, and uh, that's big. We got third and long. That's a now. confidence builder too. We got third and long now, and let's make a stop here, boys. Get back on the field. Get old Mo in your favor. Trips left for the Titans as the, he's going to roll out left. Looks pump fakes a couple times and throws it out of bounds. Riley Griffin in his face as he delivered that incomplete pass. Great stand by this Falcon defense. Way to stop the bleeding, way to figure it out, way to make a few big plays. Tanner Moon, what a huge play there. And that forcing that third down, and Riley Griffin doing a nice job. This might be a quarterback punt situation. Could be, could be. I know that Jace Patton, the quarterback for the Centennial Titans, he's a little shook up after that one. He got put on the ground there. And this isn't the NFL. They don't protect the quarterbacks quite no, the same no, way. No, no, no. Oh, Here gonna we go. They're, they're going, going for, for it. it. He looks. A lot of pressure. He's going to go Sack. down. Big time play by the Falcons. That's number 36, Curran Hill, the junior. Defensive end. This Falcon defensive front making a huge stand as they get the ball back near midfield. That's a momentum shifter right there. Old that lady gets you confidence. Yeah, you know, She's a fickle lady, you know. <laughs> That'll shift, that'll shift some confidence in the Falcons' direction as well. Now this offense come out here, build off that. Let's see if we can sustain a drive. Great job there by the Falcons. As we got under a minute to play here in the first quarter, Falcons trail 3-0. Hopefully that won't be the case for long. Falcons going with two receivers on the right. Keande, the lone receiver at the top of your screen. Cade pumps left, fires right side. He's got Brett Young Ooh. near the 50. Taken out of bounds at the 46-yard line, 47-yard line. I love the shift from last year, his, his shift of play from last year to this year and just how much he's improved. Number nine, Brett Young, man, he has shown. He tried to shake off the defender right there, almost did it. There wouldn't have been number 17 there to wrap him up. He is so much more confident this year than he was last year with yeah. catching that ball and running. Well, he's getting a, a ton more reps. I'm yep. sure that comes with the offseason program, right? He, he is one of the go-to options for this offense now. Whereas last year, you know, you were fighting for time with Weinberg and, and uh, Keande, so Nicky Gray. this could be a free play here. They Cade they, sees they, it, yep. he's going deep, he's getting for Keande, and it's intercepted. Off the hands of Keande Henry, into the hands of number seven, Jose Castillo. But there's a flag on the field, there's some mustard on the lettuce. I think we know what this one's doing. Yeah, that'll be coming back, but hey, Want to see? Want to see him throw that a little more inside? Where he's got to beat on that inside? Because Keonde, I don't think he really had a chance at that. That was just a little bit overthrown on that. Where, where, where the hash is, where they're at on that right side. Uh, Keonde was a little bit more on the inside of the numbers, and he wanted him to kind of fade Fire out toward the sideline. Yeah. yeah. Probably some miscue. Defense. That penalty was accepted. Five yards, first down. Five yards, first down. You heard it from the official, and. That went perfectly. Great job, Cade. Great job. <laughs> Great Seriously. Job. You know what? That, that is a quarterback who is really in tune with the game. I mean, he saw it. He went to his deep route. He went to his star receiver. Excellent work there by There's the Falcon offense. And here is Dylan Brockle, who is going to push forward for a pickup of 12 yards. And that is how this first quarter will end. The Falcons might be on to something as they trail 3 nothing. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Lake Dallas football fan. Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting. Local business-minded teammates supporting the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the trenches to the end zone, they're in the game. It's nitrogen services, heavy machinery, hydraulics, and equipment rentals. They've got every position covered. Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting, playing their part in the playbook of community support. 
In the heart of our community lies the spirit of young athletes thriving and growing, all thanks to Lake City's Football and Cheerleading Association, proud sponsors of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From field to spirit, they're shaping the future with every play and cheer. Lake City's Football and Cheerleading Association, a vibrant hub of growth and teamwork. Join us in applauding Lake City's Football and Cheerleading Association for their dedication to nurturing the next generation of Lake Dallas champions. We are back here, live from the Ford Center in Frisco. Falcon fans, if you don't know, of course, tell your friends, you know, because you're listening to me right now, either on YouTube or on your FM dial. But if you don't know, tell your friends how to watch these Falcon games on YouTube. Tell them to tune in to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club page on YouTube. I'm sure that's how most people will listen to it. Of course, if you are in the stadium, uh, on this away game, on away games, we're on a different frequency every time because we've got to find out what's conducive to the area. And today it happens to be 95.7. So I'm sure most of you uh, high school kids out there brought your FM tutor to the game. Go ahead and whip that thing out. Uh, 95.7 on your FM dial. I see a few antennas out there in the students. I do as well. As the Falcons are driving, they trail 3-0 in this one. And Ooh, Cade Fortnum it. play action, rolls right, fights off a defender, fires across his body. Oh. And there's a flag on the field. It was an incomplete pass intended for Sam McAfee, his first target of the night. As we wait this penalty, hey, let's go through this offensive line. We've got a left tackle number 54, William Osborne. Left guard number 56, Nathan Giamo. At center, number 72, Hayden Sander. Right guard, the sophomore, Liam Brownfield. And at right tackle, number 71, Adrian Bragg. There it is. That's your offense. Offense number line. 71. Five yards from the previous spot. You play first down. You also have that sniffer back position, number 81, Ethan Blakeson. What was the call there, Tips? Big man downfield. Okay. That's what yeah. I thought. I just heard the number and the uh, penalty for it. Play action. Fires right side. It's McAfee. Caught at the 38-yard line. Breaks one tackle. And they're not going to give him everything I thought he got. I thought they marked him a few yards short. And they let Cade know they were there that time. They made sure to hit him a little bit after that, after that throw. On comes number 32, Davin Hopkins onto the field. The green shoes mm -hmm. that you can see. He'll line up just behind Blakesley in that sniffer back position. You think they're throwing it here? I sure think they might be. It's second <laughs> down and nine. As it's going to be a handoff up the middle, it's Dylan Brockle, and he's going to scramble, try to get a few yards, really only going to be able to get one. Absolutely not. Anytime I see 81 and 32 lined up on that side, I, I'm, I'm going to guess run. I'm going to take that bet every single day. Hey, Hopkins proved, I mean, he caught a touchdown last week. That's true. They, they can draw something up for that kid. He seems to be an athlete. He does have that factor. Hopkins went off the field now. Personnel's looking like Blakesley. Of course, Brett Young at the top of your screen. As he's moving towards the bottom along with Sam McAfee. Keonde Henry going to be at the bottom of your screen as well. I Dylan Brockle, lone back in the backfield. Cade Bortnam. I think send this Trips out, send Keonde deep and see if he can run maybe McAfee across the middle of the field. As Trips left, it's a oh. screen play. Keonde Henry, he's got a couple blocks. He moved it back inside, broke a tackle. He's down near the 25-yard line getting a huge push. And that's going to be enough for a Falcon first down. That was a great, great run after catch for Keonde Henry. It looked like he had a little something, nothing, then a little something, then a little nothing, then a little something. They push him forward, and he gets that first down. That's right. That was a fun play to watch. I thought for a second when he turned it back inside, I said, oh, no, 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 mm -hmm. no. But, hey, he knows what he's doing. Don't trust me, Falcon fans. And certainly don't trust Cameron Hobbs. Trust Ke Whoa, whoa, not certainly. First down and 10 here from the 25-yard line. Handoff up the middle. There's Dylan Brockle's got room. He's at the 15, inside the That's 10, the 5. That's a touchdown for the Falcons. Man, he is so fast, and you get him in that open field. Good luck catching him. It's off for the races, folks. The Falcons take a 6-3 lead. 25-yard touchdown run for Dylan, the debacle Brockle. 10-30 to go in the second quarter. And I got a feeling things might have just turned around. Well, it was a productive drive, and it was very conductive. I can feel the electricity in the room. <laughs> Yeah, I got something on that for you on a second. Here comes Mitchell White on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up, and the kick is right down Broadway. 7 nothing, or I'm sorry, 7-3. Falcons lead. We'll be right back, and the tips will come right back to you. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. We'll be right back with more Lake Dallas Falcon football from the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast.
Need lunch, but you're in a hurry? Well, I have the solution for you. Try Chick-fil-A in Corinth, located smack dab in the middle of Kensington Square. At Chick-fil-A in Corinth, the service is always fast, the food is always top-notch, and it's always their pleasure to serve you. Don't forget, they have breakfast too. Opens at 6 a.m. Monday through Saturday, dark on Sundays. Chick-fil-A, where dreams come true. Give me some of that sweet tea. Drive the excitement of Lake Dallas Falcon football with James Wood Auto Park, proud sponsors of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the field to the road, they are all about top performance. James Wood Auto Park, the driving force of the Lake Dallas Falcon football. All right, we are back here live from the Ford Center, and it's a little pooch kick here. Fielded at the 30-yard line, fair caught, and I have a correction to make. I must not have had a good angle here from the 50-yard line <laughs> second deck broadcast booth. My eyes deceived me. Mitchell White actually uh, pushed that one. It's 6-3 Falcons. If there's any eye doctors out there, want have to sponsor the stream. Have you seen the video of that college game when that dude missed it? That was you. It was so, uh, okay. Th this sounds bad. It was missed. Not very. It was. It was a miss. Okay. And you were like right down Broadway, and I was so <laughs> I know, confused. I know. Like right down Broadway. Well, Broadway actually is to the right of the field goal post. Yeah, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, that's but what I meant. we'll go back to something good on that touchdown. So, yeah, give us a little insight so there, Tips. Dylan with an outstanding run. He's in open field. It's easy, right? It looked so clear. Well, Brett had his DB pushed almost all the way to the back side of the end zone. It was that. It was all because of that block. That's why that scored. Good to know. I love to hear that. Brett Young is, is impressing us every time he takes the field. As That's going to be a first down for the Titans. We're going to need a little bit more shirt up in the middle of the field. Yeah, there, right over the that, middle there. They that can was dump that off all day on us. Senior tight end Tyler <coughs> Hughes on the Excuse receiving me. end of that one. And uh, he's, a, he's a big, strong kid. It looks like they might uh, try that again. You got cataracts? I don't have cataracts. I don't know, man. Cameron, why, why don't you worry about doing color? This is a handoff. Harry Stewart up the middle. Nothing man, doing for him on nothing. that play. Second 10. Great, great stop by this Falcon front. Cat. Well, I mean, I would take you to the doctor, and I would drive you to get the procedure. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you for being a friend. You're, You're a welcome. pal and a confidant. You're welcome. Man, this Falcon front right here, this defensive front, they seems like they've kind of gotten a little more loose on stopping this running back so far. Let's see if they can do it here as they're lined up in this pistol formation, Smitty. Two receivers on the top of your screen, one on the bottom here, and it's going to be a quick oh, pass oh. in and out of the hands of the receiver, number three, Ramsey Meters. Well, Tell you what, X, throw up the X, throw right? Throw up the X, number three for the Falcons. Xavier Rodriguez almost gets in there to make a play, or at least kind of makes number three for the Titans think that he made a play, which causes him to not catch the ball and, you know, tip drill. He definitely altered the outcome there. Tip drill, we could get us a little something going here. As we now have third and long, third and ten from the 43-yard line. Titans on their own 43-yard line. 9.24 here to go in the second quarter. Falcons lead 6-3. Pistol formation, sniffer back on the right side. Quarterback looks right, scrambles a little bit. There's Boom. pressure, it's Darius Duncan's bringing him down. And that's going to be a huge play for this Falcon defense. Hey, Darius Duncan's right there. He just says, uh-uh, you're not getting away from me, son. Takes him down, huge tackle for loss. Going to bring him this fourth down, going to force the punt unit. Falcons, got the little mo in their favor right now. Got the mo as on comes the punt unit. Back deep to receive for the Falcons at the Lake Dallas 30-yard line is going to be number three. Throw up the X, Xavier Rodriguez. Hey, throw it up. Throw it up. Tips, let's see the X. Oh, he's over there. I thought... <laughs> it's going to be booted out of bounds at the 30-yard line, and that is where the Falcons will take over their next possession with 8.35 here to go in the second quarter of this one. What are you looking to see out of the Falcons in this drive? I really want to see, I think, a healthy – happy medium of running the ball, pass the ball. So we've done a great job running the ball. Maybe get your receivers involved just a little bit more. The Keonde Henry pa uh, pass screen right here that got it going, got this drive a little more opened up, was huge. Maybe get Brett Young a little touch down the field. See if we can get his confidence up in this game a little more. He's already blocking great. Get him some more touches on the ball. Absolutely. Blakesley in at the sniffer back position. Two running backs. Here's a formation backfield. we haven't seen yet. Of course, it's McAfee. 
and Brockle. McAfee scrambles left, tries to break one tackle. The defender just wouldn't let him go. Only a pickup of one on that one. Yeah, and he about lost a shoulder pad on that one and the way he was getting tackled down. Is that, call, is that not a horse collar almost? Uh, I think it was more of the shoulder. It's more of the yeah, shoulder. Yeah, about got him. I, it's hard to see up here. We got 20-20 though, so it's a little easier for me than you, you know? Unbelievable. Cade Bortnum, <laughs> shotgun formation. Brockle in the backfield, play oh, action, and that man. ball is tipped. They were going to Brett Young. Number 17, Michael Frizzle. Hey, Frizzle. Frizzell? It's Frizzle, but that was a... It is Frizzle. I was it? not expecting that last name. That was a great play by the young man to, to, to tip that ball, and unfortunately, K just couldn't get that one completed, but that was a great effort by Frizzle. Wasn't that the Magic School Bus teacher? Miss Frizzle. Miss Frizzle. Shout out to you if you're listening. Two receivers at the <laughs> top of your screen. That's a free Double play. Double set. Free play. Going got deep. Keone. He He's got him. Keone. He's overthrown him, And it's though. intercepted once again on the free play. Same guy. And the offense is going to have to make a tackle here, and it happens. McAfee <laughs> able to bring him down at midfield, but it's free play. Free Man, play. This deep ball, Cade's got to be able to, to hit that deep ball a little better. I think he thought Keonde was going to be running a little bit faster, and he just overthrew him right there. That's kind of what happened Offside. the last time. Mm -hmm. Defense number 46. Five-yard penalty. Third down. I want to I want to see Cade get that deep ball and connect on. I think that would boost the confidence of this of, of this offense because they've got the run down, they've got the short pass. Having a deep ball threat like that, it's huge. We saw it with Nikki Gray last year. We did. Shotgun formation, two backs in the backfield. Two receivers on the top of your screen. Keonde, the lone receiver on the bottom, and it's a screen pass. It's the oh. debacle, and he's across midfield, driven out of bounds at the 43-yard line. First down for the Falcons and then some. Man, man, he had a lot of room. He was kind of floating that sideline, trying to kind of stay in bounds. And, and number eight, Adam Schmidt, is able to is able to get him out of bounds and, and, and make a play on that. This is replayed. Is there a face cover. mask missed here? I didn't see one. Nah, I just got him by the shoulder pad. It looked really weird from my angle. I was like, um. Mixed misdirection didn't go anywhere for the Falcons on that one. It'll bring up second down. Let's send one down the middle of the field, Smitty. How about that, huh? Let's send Brett Young down the middle of the field. You in? I'm in. I'm in. Man, Brett Young's got, kind of got himself by himself out there on an island. It looks like Centennial is confused defensively here on as far as the secondary goes. They're kinda they kinda just pulled it together a little bit. He's got Brett Young right He's there. He's got Brett Young at the 40. Brett Young makes a play. Stiff arms a man. And that's gonna be a huge Falcon first down. Well, there's the confidence we were talking about, huh? That's gonna boost his confidence even more. This guy has made so much stride, so much stride to be a better player this year. And it's it is showing the work he's put in the offseason. Love to see it from this Falcons offense as they look like they're starting to find a little bit of a rhythm. They have some go-to plays that seem to be in their back pocket at all times. As this is a handoff up the middle. Dylan Brockle going to push forward for a pickup of five yards. From what we saw the first drive in to right now, this offensive line has stepped it up. And they have they have started to get their blocking in to where they're, pu they're kind of pushing this defense around a little bit. And it's good to see them because at first, you know, there was, there was nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. But now, they're able to create a little bit of hold. Now, they're, they're, every now and then, defense is going to get in and get a stop. But they've been able to kind of have their way with this defense these last couple drives. 6.25 here to go in the second quarter. Falcons up 6-3 over top the Centennial Titans. Handoff like left that. side. Dylan Brockle going to have enough for a Falcon first down, it looks like. That'll move the chains. And the Falcons are inside the red zone. And they're able to just push to the sides, create these holes. I'm really impressed with this offensive line. And it... Out goes Brockle. In comes Davin Hopkins. Keonde Henry moving from left to right. Got McAfee lined up back there at the running back. He is he's shifty. Hopkins set behind Blakesley at the sniffer back, and they're running. And inside the 15, Sam McAfee is able to pick up a couple yards. I think last week's big story was how McAfee was able to move over to running back and just be able to do whatever he wanted to at any time. And this week, seems like Brockle's kind of able to do whatever he wants to. It just kind of 
it's, it's, it's who do you want tonight, you know, as you're running back to, to do what they want. McAfee had 86 yards last week against Greenville. Very uh, good showing, and that's going to back him up. False start on the Falcons. That'll back him up. That's that's tough. That's going to be Nathan Giamo on that one, number False 56. Start. Inside the red Offense zone. number 56. Five-yard penalty. Second down. You know, in a game like this where it seems like it's kind of going to be – it's going to be a dogfight. These boys are out there playing. Mm-hmm. And uh, this offensive unit is tough to stop when they're rolling. Really, the only thing that seems to stop them from time to time is themselves. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's the second game of the season at, at the same time. Let's not get carried away with that. But that's just a little bit of what we've seen so far in the early goings of this season. Cade Bortnum looking, fires, end Got zone. Got oh, oh, just under threw it. It was there. It was, but Brett Young was wide open over here. He had a defender watching him, but he could have he could have dumped it off a little bit if he needed to. Now, Keonde's going to have that touchdown if it's just thrown a little bit higher. But the safe play, <laughs> Brett Young's over here waving his arms. <laughs> he was open right down here by the, by, the, uh, by the markers. Five minutes to go in the second quarter. Shotgun formation, double set wide receivers. Dylan They're Brock. They're somebody, I think. The running back. I think they're I think they're showing a little bit of a little bit of extra pressure on this one. Oh, he's Snap kick looks out. right. He's gonna keep it himself up the middle, inside the 15, inside the 10, down to the five, runs over a man, and the Falcons will have first and goal from the four-yard line. Cade Bortnum getting it done on the ground. Man, and Bortnum just absolutely runs over number 28. Caden Whittle. I mean, he's that poor soul, dude. He just got the completely replay. Look run at this. through. Look at this. Oh, oh no, that's number eight. That was number eight. First that down, Falcons. Schmid. Schmitty. Handoff, right side. It's Brockle. Oh, what he's a... going for the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown, Falcons. What a block by McAfee. McAfee was able to make a block. Almost blocked two guys right there. Did you see that, Tibbs? Did you get a look at that? Yeah, shoved him back, uh, and then all Brock had to do was beat number eight to the outside, uh -huh. and well, it was basically a walk-in at that point. Great play, great and play design. It appears that due to the missed extra point on the first drive that the Falcons scored on. Why not? Why not Falcons now find themselves with a 12-3 lead after that touchdown, and they say, hey, keep them out there, go for two. Try to get it to 14-3 with 442 here to go in the second quarter. They look a little confused. They were, yeah. and they're going to call a timeout. Use Good timeout, timeout out right there. Use your timeout. timeout. You got three of them. Lake and as Dallas. they step aside, we will as Their well. Their first charge, timeout and a half. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Mark Tucker, your local Allstate agent, has been a proud sponsor of your Lake Dallas Falcons football before there was a Lake Dallas Falcons football team. Mark was a sponsor before there were automobiles, before... There was even a Mark Tucker. Ha! Impossible, you say? Not if you know Mark Tucker. Your rate's too high. Your company raising your rates every time you turn left. Give Mark a try. Mention Lake Dallas while getting a quote. And for every quote, $5 will go to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club. $5, $5, $5. ka -ching. Mark Tucker, your local Allstate agent. Drive the excitement of Lake Dallas Falcon football with James Wood Auto Park, proud sponsors of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the field to the road, they are all about top performance. James Wood Auto Park, the driving force of the Lake Dallas Falcon football. Touchdowns in support, that's what Lake Dallas football is all about. Proudly sponsored by Lorenz Contracting, your trusted general contractor and roofing expert. For top-notch construction and roofing solutions, visit Lorenz Contracting at russroofing.com. That's R-U-S-S, -S, roofing.com. We're back, 442 here to go. The Falcons attempting a two-point conversion. Portnum going to keep it, rolls left. I think he has the edge, and he's in. Man, he's gotten so much faster this season. One thing I noticed on the, on the extra point, Smitty, last year and the year before, you saw him do kind of that swinging gate a lot. We've not seen that once this year. We haven't. No, and they I don't believe they ever actually followed through with it one time last year. They would always I think shift it back over. Two years ago or last year, I think they did one time. One time they did it. And I, you might have missed that week. I think it might have been the week you missed that <laughs> they did it. Okay, good to know. Good to know. Well, anyways, folks, 14-3, the Falcons take what feels like in this game, a commanding lead almost. It, it feels like it's just gonna be neck and neck the whole time. So to have a two score lead in the early goings of this one uh, is comforting to say the least if it you're is. a Falcon fan out there. Falcons country, let's fly. Mm -hmm. Let's fly, let's soar, you know? Ah! Ah! 
get some dogs going, you know? Mitchell White set to kick off for the Falcons. Falcons gonna fly, you heard. But Harry Stewart out there, ready to receive for the Titans, and it's gonna be a pooch kick. And that's exactly what Coach Young was talking about in his pregame interview is you don't kick it to a guy like Harry Stewart. That's nope. when you decide that. Nope. If you got Harry Stewart back deep, you're not gonna kick it to him. He's committed to a D1 Big 12 program. I'm, I'm not kicking it to him. What program? Kansas. Mm. <clears throat> there you go. And they've been on the up. Last year they had a better year, more improved. Yeah. They've got, got a new coach out there in the last couple of years. They're building a program. I mean, Tips, how long has it been since they beat Texas? <laughs> I don't want to answer you. <laughs> yes, I was at that game, and it was sad. 14-3 <laughs> Falcons lead, 437 here to go in the second quarter of this week two matchup between the Centennial Titans and the Lake Dallas Falcons. Harry Stewart catches a quick pass right side, brought down by a gang of Falcon tacklers. It's Xavier Rodriguez, it's number eight, Tony Butler, and it is number two, Jalen Brooks making the tackle. In this game, the second half, we're gonna see it's gonna be a war of attrition. Who wants it more? Who's got the more stamina this week two? Who's got the most stamina week two? I mean, they're gonna be running down Harry Stewart in a lot of this game, so we're gonna see these Falcons. They're gonna have to rise up and kinda see who wants it more. We know they've been training in heat. We know Coach Young's got them ready for this. Pistol formation. Looks like two tight ends. One tight end there, and it's going to be a run play. Harry Stewart looking for anything he can get out of the backfield. He's going to be swallowed up behind the line of scrimmage. That Number 25 coming in on the back end of that play. That was, that was senior nowhere. linebacker Corbin Bailey. He's looked good since he came in. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> That's going nowhere. You know, it's it's been kind of nice to see, you know, if they have anybody pulling anything like that. Watch your DNs. They're going to go down try to blow that up. Blow up everything in the backfield and make, make, make Henry's job as hard as possible. And they're doing a really good job, and then your linebacker's filling. So everything right now is just smooth as butter. Tight end left side. Smooth as butter, he said. And quick pass. There's a better tackle. Tackled behind the sticks. Jacarian Jackson making a nice play. Forcing fourth down and short for the Titans. And they're going to be faced with a decision here. Tips, I'd call that play smooth as butter. Yeah, defense. that was too. But smooth you know what, butter. right here, if you're Centennial, you might take all the time in the world, use your last time out. And get it out of there. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I mean, I can definitely see them running a play here or running it all the way down, use that time out, maybe get someone to jump a couple times. But other than that, you I, know, I And this I might no be idea. a scenario where you hear it all the time. You can't win a game in the first half, but you can lose it. Mm-hmm. And this, this oh, could be it. one of those scenarios where they, they feel that way where, hey, if we give this ball back to the Falcons at, their, uh, at the Titans 38-yard line and they go down and score. Timeout. Centennial. That's their probably what they're trying to avoid here. So. The Falcons get the ball back after the half, correct? They do. The Titans receive the opening kickoff. As of right now, the Falcons lead 14-3. We'll keep it right here. We're going to play plenty of commercials and pay our bills at halftime. If you're watching on YouTube, you're going to be able to check out our Mean Green Fighting Machine, the Falcon Band. They're going to be out there zigging and zagging and getting down in the way that only they do here at halftime at the Ford Center. But right now, let's look at some stats. Cade Bortnum, 5 of 7, 59 yards through the air. Dylan Brockle, the Falcons' leading rusher, 9 carries, 56 yards. And he's got two touchdowns on the night. Brett Young, the Falcons' leading receiver, he's got two catches for 27 yards. Dylan Brockle's got a catch for 19. And Keonde Henry has one for 12, or two for 12. I'm sorry, one for 12. Getting a little carried away here. So, Falcons <coughs> moving it around. But one of the biggest plays of this game so far was Cade Bortnum's 16-yard run to get the Falcons a first down inside the five-yard line. And that's how they were able to set up their score on their last drive. I mean, look just like a running back. Just put his head down and just mowed a defender over. Xavier Rodriguez, fair catches the punt at the Falcon 35-yard line. That's where Cade Bortnum and this high-flying offense will take over, trying to get some points on the board with 2.29 to go in the second quarter of this Week 2 matchup. I mean, if you're the Falcons, I'd be a little aggressive here. Just a little. 229, two timeouts, you go for it. You don't think you would just try to sit on well, it here? We've no, seen this. You're Listen, going for it. <laughs> no, we've seen this before, though, where they sometimes will run it, run it, and run it, run it until halftime. I mean, we might see a couple run plays. They do have a couple timeouts, 
as the opening play is going to be a handoff up the middle. Dylan Brockle, he pushes forward for a pickup of five. And you can go quick here if you want. Yeah. It looks like it. They already got a play call coming in. So, I mean, I think I think you got to get some points, even if it's only three. Okay. Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to say here, but I, I want to see some urgency. Sometimes we don't always see that before half. There we go. Here's the snap. Looks left. Pump fakes. Fires. He's got Keande across nice midfield. Move. Keande Henry going to have enough to pick up the first down. It took about eight of the 11 players to take him down. And so keep in mind... The clock does stop, of course. It's high school football. Oh, it's running. Well, it's running now, but it stopped immediately. It stopped. It's it's yeah. to get the down marker down. So it says first down, once that plants, you exactly. start that clock. Exactly, yeah. You get you get a second. Shotgun snap. Quick pass. Right side, it's Brett Young caught at the 47-yard mm. line. Nearly taken out by his own man. I think I think he had a seam up the middle. Did you see that, Tips? There was one, but you can kind of see where so the big th key there is if you get that block sealed toward the inside where you can run down the sideline. So it was weird. Like the defender jumped and then re-jumped out. So it kind of sealed it off. But, yeah, I kind of liked the middle, but I can definitely see what he saw. Yeah. Out goes Blakesley. In comes sophomore tight end Davin Hopkins. You got Brett Young at the top of your screen. McAfee going to be the lone back. Brockle lined up behind Hopkins as the sniffer back. Keonde Henry at the bottom of your screen. Play action. Fortnum looks left. It's a screen. Davin Hopkins, he's going to get to the 45-yard line. Thought he stayed up there for a second. He's going to be inside the 45, marked down at the 43. I do like the check down. Brockle was waving his arm in the air like he was open, but I don't know if he fully was open. He had his guy beat for a second, but it would have been a little bit risky. I like the play call, though. It's just something trying to get big chunks of yards, catch yep. him off guard a little bit, especially I'm sure if, if Brockle was lined up behind Hopkins there, they were keying on Brockle. As Bortnum, one read goes to Brett Young. Brett Young nearly coming down with it. Here. There's a flag on the field, and I think this is going to go in favor of the Falcons. That's pass interference right there. Tips, you got to watch that, that line there, the coach's box. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that's our big rule tonight. <laughs> I mean, Bortnum knew exactly what he was doing once he saw the lineup. One-on-one -on -one coverage. He and did. he just threw it up right when the ball was snapped. He Not knew he was going to Brett Young. Defense there we go. Two. That's going to be a free 15. 15 yards from the previous spot. First down. It Come wasn't in. a bad throw. I mean, he no, had the no. chance to make a play on it and pull it in. And if Brett Young would have pulled that in, that's going to be a highlight reel for and, him. And Young really made a nice job reacting to the ball and uh, nearly came down with it there. First down, Falcons at the 28-yard line, oh, and we're going to be backed up a little bit here. That's going to be a false start. So there are 59 seconds to go. We are Miles under board. a minute in the second quarter here. Falcons lead 14-3. They have two timeouts. So we, we can Just need to settle down a little bit, guys. We can move a little bit here. Mm -hmm. There's timeouts. There's time to use. What's this chant going on here? Oh, it's Centennials. Full start. I don't know what you call them. Knights? Hood? Titans. I don't know. Titans. Still first down. Titan Hood? Foul happened before one minute, so there is no runoff. All right. Shotgun formation stacked on the I top like of your screen. We got 55 Please seconds adjust on the clock, clock now. To 59 seconds. Yep, 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 yep. So good call, snap. Cameron. 59 seconds to go. Did it, was that you, Smitty, or was that me? What? About the, about the time. I pointed at it, but not sure. Thank you for the. Thank you for that. I saw your finger. Oh yeah, I saw the 55, but I was like, huh, weird. Well, that's four seconds. Interesting. Quick pass. No pump fake. It's a halfback draw up the middle. It was Dylan Brockle, and he was just trying to get back to the original first down marker. And he's going to be brought well, down at the 30 yard a little line. Little sense of urgency would be nice here, guys. And so 45 seconds to go, and the clock is ticking. Falcons have two timeouts. It's second down and 12 from the 30-yard line. Falcons trying to put some points on the board before the end of this half. Got Quick it. pass. Left side. Keonde oh, nice Henry. Move. He makes a man miss. He's inside the 15, brought down at the 11, and I'm sure the Falcons will burn a timeout. 30 man. seconds on the clock. Keonde's a little mad. Number seven on the other team, <laughs> Jose Castillo. Did not want to help him up there Not at calling all. a timeout. I misspoke. <laughs> Clock's ticking. 27, 26, 25. 
Snap, and it's a handoff. Dylan Brockle, he's going to scamper across the five-yard line. That's, he's in. Wow. Touchdown, Falcons. What a move. What a move. I mean, he just looked. Nothing there, nothing there. He's going to take off. There's something there. He's going, going. Looks like he's going down. He's staying up, and he's in the end zone all of a sudden. It's crazy. Dylan, the debacle Brockle, finds the end zone once again in the first half. That's three first half touchdowns for number four. The Falcons lead 20 to three. Here's Mitchell White for the extra point. The kick is up. And the kick is good. <laughs> I like how you waited for the referee this time, Smitty. 21-3. We'll keep it right here. There's only 16 seconds to go in the first half. Of course, we have our band. Get ready for that at halftime. But right now, let's talk about this Falcon offense. Cade Bortnum finding Keande Henry for a big time 19-yard pass. They were at the 30-yard line. It was second and 12. 19-yard pickup and then an 11-yard touchdown run by Dylan Brockle as time was ticking. The Falcons able to put more points on the board as here in the second quarter, they've started to pile it on a little bit. 21-3 yeah. they lead. And you're going to the you cannot let off the gas when you come out of halftime. I think that's my biggest, that's gonna be my key to the second half. Falcons have scored a touchdown. Each of the last three drives, they've had the ball. Oh, Davin oh, Hopkins oh. running him down and making a huge oh. play. That's the energy you wanna see if you're Coach Young. Tips, you are gonna have an exciting halftime interview. I got a feeling he's gonna be in a good mood. I sure hope so. Team's playing really well. I know we kinda got off to that. <laughs> kind of shocking start, big play, and then Look the offense three and out. But hey, I know he's down here. He's vibing. I love having replays in the stadium because Big 32, Gavin Hopkins just runs him down. Fantastic player, sophomore. That, that kid is going to have some big time moments here for Lake Dallas football in the years to come. 12 seconds to go. Centennial hands it off. Left side. It's Harry Stewart. He's going to break a couple tackles, but eventually get brought down at the 36 yard line. Yeah, and that's not that crazy that they got a first down on that. We're definitely in a safe defense yeah. here. You can already throw them up. They're throwing yeah. eight. So they're playing deep, deep, yeah, yeah. deep yeah. quarters. Playing Absolutely. If you're a first-time listener, just know that we do have a halftime interview coming up with Coach Young. Adam Tips, our sideline reporter, will be conducting that. And that is a, your halftime score. Lake Dallas, 21. Centennial Titans. Three. Well, Smitty, I think I think going into the second half here, I think what you're going to have to see. And we're going to throw it down to Adam Tips now as he's walking with Coach Young. Tips, take it away. Yes, guys, I'm with Coach Young. Coach, great start to the half. What, what, what are you seeing from the Centennials defense that you're able to take advantage of here? Well, they, they do some things, and a lot of times they just jet their ends straight up field. And so we're able to down block, kick out, and it's, it's creating big holes. Cade, I mean, it's not crazy numbers the first half, but he's finding receivers, five of seven right now. What do you got to say about that? Not bad. I mean, we're, 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 we're doing okay as far as the passing game. Obviously, I'm not too upset. We're up 21 to three, so uh, we're doing good. And then we're talking about Henry before the game, but so far, a couple big plays, but for the most part, y'all shut him down. What do you got to say about that? Well, yeah, he's a hell of a back, and we got to route to him. What I don't understand is their good receiver, number four, um, isn't in the game, so I don't know if he's suspended for. I think he went out with an arm injury. But he hadn't been in the game, so I expect them to come out with him, which is going to open their offense up quite a bit. So but we still got we still got to play. We got a lot of football to play. Thanks, coach. All right, so we heard it there from the coach. He's in a good mood. That was and, the quickest uh, you've ever gotten to the coach tips, and I'm impressed. Yeah, you got there fast. You did a great job. I did there. my best, guys. You know, last week we had the little debacle where I had to like run 20 yards. They didn't want to do that again. No, no, you did a great job there. And uh, we'll leave it here. We're going to come back when we uh, are, are about ready to go with the second half of play. We're going to give you a small halftime show, explain how the Falcons got themselves in this position. They lead 21-3 at halftime over top of the Frisco Centennial Titans. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast.
to the Spirit Girl of the Week, Andre Furman. Now for your halftime entertainment, the Lake Dallas High Steppers will perform a kick routine to the Edge of Glory, performed by the Lake Dallas Falcons Marching Band. of the Pride of Falconland, the award-winning Falcon Marching Band. The Falcon Band will begin their halftime performance by saluting our great nation with a medley of Battle Hymn of the Republic and Texas R. Texas. The Falcon Band is under the field direction of senior drum majors Dylan McKinney and Jennifer Gutierrez and junior drum major Rebecca Skousen. Please put your hands together for the 2023 Falcon Marching Band.
directors for the Lake Dallas High School marching band are Denise Kennedy, Douglas Bell, Jeff Garza, and Grace Leach, with assistance from color guard instructor Abigail Rungazi. Section of the week, the clarinets. Member of the week, junior mellophone, Sarah Bello. Gold sponsors for the Falcon Band are Mark Tucker Allstate and Air by Ferris. Silver sponsors for the Falcon Band are Texas Lumberjacks, Epic Nails, Global Spheres, and Hefine Subaru Corinth. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Thursday Night Lights. Centennial High School is proud to present the award-winning Titan Band. This evening, the Titan Band will present its traditional spirit show featuring John Philip Sousa's classic, Stars and Stripes Forever. Sit back and enjoy the solid Titan horn line, the dynamic drum line, and the splendid color guard as they perform for you. And now, under the field direction of senior drum majors Sanjana Puta and Yuvraj Atre, and junior drum majors Ranjana Ram and Jacob Weber, it's your Titan Band! Directed by Andy Ryan, Ashley Kay, and Ryan Andre. The drum line is under direction of Chad Wallace and Jesse Ramirez. Color guard is led by Brian Greenleaf and assisted by Lauren Flores. The principal of Centennial High School is Kara Henderson, and managing director for Fine Arts of Frisco ISD is Preston Hazard.
Ladies and gentlemen, Centennial High School is proud to present the Sweetheart Dance Team. Dance officers are Lieutenant Sidney Hoffman, Lieutenant Molly Hatcher, Lieutenant Charlotte Barrow, First Lieutenant Madeline Servant, and Captain Kylie Cox. Social officers are Head Social Officer Caitlin McGarry, Social Officer Arian Ortiz, Social Officer Layla Bay Anderson, Social Officer Emily Kelly, Social Officer Olivia Lewis, and Social Officer Alexandra Fair. Sweetie of the Week is Lauren King. Sweetheart of the Week is Layla Garza. Golden Heart of the Week is Adelia Servant. And Squad of the Week is Kylie's Karaoke's. This evening, the Sweethearts will be performing a field kick to Bad Romance.
All right, Falcon fans, we are back. Hope you enjoyed your halftime show. I hope you got things situated and you got your snacks and you got your drinks and you got your popcorn and you are ready for the second half of action live from the Ford Center. We thank you for tuning in on YouTube or on 95.7 on your FM dial. And Cameron, let's talk a little bit about this first half of action. The Falcons find themselves up 21 to three. And quite frankly, the offense is starting to move well. They're starting to find soft spots in the defense and the defense, I, I wouldn't say they've imposed their will or anything like that, but they've made big plays on third down or second down, forcing a long, long third down when they've needed to. And I think that's really what's been sparking this team. Well, it seems like they're starting to get their sea legs, if you will, Smitty. <laughs> um, Want to see them come out with the same energy they had in the first half. You know, came out a little stale in that first drive, as the offense would do, and the defense, but they got it together. Got, and we see them do that every now and then, from last year to this year, kind of come out a little bit, you know, not overwhelmed, but just not as energetic as they've been later in the game. And I want to see them come out with that same intensity in the second half that they exhibited through from the second drives on through the game and see, see them close this one out. Of course, the storyline uh, for Centennial in this game, Harry Stewart, he is a big-time high school football player. He's uh, carried the ball 12 times and only got 46 yards. So, I mean, to hold that guy to those limited numbers in the first half and to only hold this powerful Titan offense to three points in the first half says a lot about this Falcon defense. Another storyline for the Titans in this one, Brett Eskilden, one of their best weapons on offense. He had two receiving touchdowns last week against Richardson in their 38-29 victory over Richardson. He went out in the first series, and we haven't seen him since. He went out in a sling, and uh, I don't know if any of the Lake Dallas coaches were aware that it was an injury that might keep him out of the game indefinitely. I know in the Coach Young interview, uh, he was questioning why he wasn't on the field and, and even wondered if he may have been suspended or something like that. So I'm sure that they got their bearings about him in that Lake Dallas locker room, and they might know the facts uh, a little better at this point, I'm sure. But that's nonetheless how, the, how they think about it or how they see it. He's not been a factor in this game because he's not been in this game. So it's a, it's a huge turning point there uh, early on. Well, he's their big weapon. That was a huge turning point. And it's, for the Titans, it's going to be, you know, who can step up and be that, be that guy, be that receiver for them downfield that's going to help them open things up for this running game. And for the Falcons, it's going to be, hey, let's, let's get Brett Young involved again. Keande Henry showed some big plays, as he will do. I mean, Keande showing those, that run after catch ability was awesome. Brett Young had some huge plays in the first half. Keep him involved, and let's have a good game, good second half. Cade Boredom, you know, that accuracy did improve as that, as that first half went on. So, man, a lot of positives to take away from this first half. Defense, that defensive front looked good. Let's, let's, let's see if we can build off that. Cade Boredom, 9 of 11 with 95 yards through the air in the first half. Dylan Brockle, the leading rusher for the Falcons. He found the end zone three times, 75 yards on 12 carries. He's averaging over six yards a carry. Keande Henry, three catches, 43 yards. Brett Young, three catches, 29 yards. And Davin Hopkins caught a ball as well for three-yard pickup. Uh, really not much to say in terms of statistics for the Centennial Titans. And that's because this Falcon defense is really doing a good job of mitigating big plays and uh, getting them off the field. In fact, the Falcon offense was moving so well that each of the last three times they had the ball, they scored a touchdown. They're going to get the ball to receive, or they're going to get the ball here to start this second half of play with a 21-3 lead. And we'll see if they can score for their fourth consecutive drive. Fingers cross, Cameron, as the ball is up and into the hands of number three, Xavier Rodriguez, fielded at the three-yard line, moves left. Big oh. block by Riley Griffin. That's going to be a, fl a flag. Flag's coming out on that one. It's soft, but it is what you see. Soft. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a block in the back. That's pretty obvious. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little soft, though. I mean, he caught him right when he was turning. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's gonna I mean. Called. Did you watch yeah. Hard Knocks this week? I did. That was dirty. But Cobb, I love you. <laughs> Here's Tips, a, resident Jets fan. One of the few in the Dirty state of Texas. Turn, personal foul, blindside block, number 24 of the receiving team. Penalties half the distance to the goal, 
first down. Well, you know. It's literally a cob block. Yep, that's what it looked like, and they're trying to protect these kids. So, you know, just want to, I mean, you understand it. Got to be better about that, but it was a huge block. Falcons take over. First down and 10 from their own 10-yard line after the penalty. Dylan Brockle in the backfield. It's going to be a handoff. He bounces it towards the right and bounces off of a defender. He's going to pick up eight yards. Nice first play of the second half. It is. It is going to be a huge chunk. You're going to have, what, a second down and two to go, three to go. And so, you know, keep chipping away. Brett Young at the bottom of your screen. Two receivers at the top. It's McAfee in the slot. Keonde Henry at the top of your screen. Brockle in the backfield. Play action, screen pass, McAfee, and he's oh. blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Number seven, Jose Castillo making a play for the Centennial Titans. That's a tone setter kind of play right there. That is. Let's that throw it downfield real quick. I mean, that, don't run it right here. You're backed up. Maybe throw it downfield, see if you can get it. If not, punt it away. Trust your defense. That's the kind of play that you look for when you're down 21-3 as a head coach of the mm -hmm. Titans. You want Castillo coming out there and laying the wood like that and he did. Falcons have a big third down right down here. Down stacked up down here, closest to us. Brett Young on the line of scrimmage. It looks like number 12, Jack Bryant, the backup quarterback even. Uh, he's, oh. he's stacked behind Brett Young at the bottom of your screen. Keonde Henry and Sam McAfee stacked at the top. Falcons a little confused, going to call a timeout. Timeout. Lake Dallas. First charge, timeout of the half. So as they step away, we will as well. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. We'll be right back with more Lake Dallas talking football from the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, football season is back, and there's no better way to kick it off than with Huffine Subaru Corinth, proud sponsor of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Huffine Subaru Corinth is not just your ordinary car dealership. They're the driving force behind the Lake Dallas community. With a passion for sports, they're dedicated to helping our local athletes reach for the stars. Go see them now for any pre-owned and new vehicle needs. 21-3, Falcons lead as they face third down and five from their own 16-yard line. They're looking at that stacked formation once again. Brett Young at the bottom of your screen. Jack Bryant lined up behind him. Keonde Henry at the top of your screen. Sam McAfee lined up behind him. No tight ends. Dylan Brockle, the lone back in the backfield. Shotgun snap. Bortnum looks right. Fires. He's got Brett Young for a first down. And Young able to make a play. The Falcons needed that in a big way. They moved the chains. Man. And hopefully restore some order to this Falcon offense that was moving so swiftly in the first half. That does restore some order. Who do you cover in this situation? Do you double up Keanu? Do you start pulling somebody over to Brett Young? He's been pulling him down every time they've been thrown his way. You know, Tips, that, that's an interesting question. How do you defend that stack formation? Well, first guy's got to take on that initial receiver, and the other guy's got to play the guy at the back. Uh, that's basically the only way to do it. And then it's guessing right when it's those little short passes like that. But other than that, communication. And you know, if you want to call out a guy and be like, I'm going with one, then you're going with one. So it, that all comes down to however the other team coaches it. Brockle in motion, play action. Borton, I'm going to have to fire across his body. Nobody around. It'll bring up second down. So my question then tips. Let's say that they have that stacked formation, and you're saying the first guy is going to take that initial receiver, right? The cornerback that's lined up face-to-face -face with him. What's stopping that stacked receiver, or if there's another word for it, let me know, but the guy that's off the line of scrimmage, what's stopping him from running a wheel route up the sideline? Who can get to him fast enough? If, if let's say, yeah, the initial well, receiver it, runs a slant inside. Yeah, what I would do, honestly, is so the first, the, the corner is going to cover and, Hold like, that. travel with him. Hold that thought as we yeah. call this play real quick oh. as there's some motion on the far end of the field. Looks like false start, Keonde Henry. False start. Offense number 54. Carry that thought, Five-yard penalty. Second down. So, yeah, so that, that initial, that corner is going to be able to travel. Uh, with the inside guy, and it's all about speed for that safety to get over there and cover, or unless you can have a linebacker then cover. But like I said, it all comes down to alignment. And my, my preference is to try to stack someone out. Like, have a double. If they're going to stack, why don't y'all come out here and stack as well? Sure, sure. No, that would make sense. That's Osborne's second false start penalty of the night. Uh, oh, oh, that was Osborne? I thought it was on Keonde. No, it was Osborne. 
Shotgun formation, as we so often see from this Falcon offense. Keonde Henry in motion from the top of your screen to the bottom, and it's going to be a handoff up the middle. No, Cade's going to keep it on his own and get brought down by a gang of tacklers behind the line of scrimmage. There was just nothing there. That defense swarmed in. They read that like a book and, and just able to stop the offense there, and that's going to force a punt. We got third and oh, forever. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to force a third. I'm sorry. Third and forever for the Falcons here. Hilted. Shout out to a Threw few of our YouTube listeners. Andy Walker out there listening. And then I think Grayson Walker is out there listening as well. The killer right. from Manila, Grayson Walker. All right. Shouts out to you, pal. Shout, out, shout out Tommy and Darla Wooten. Second Two. time tune inners. There we go. Trips left. Falcons got all their threats on the field here. <laughs> Brett Young, the lone wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Brockle running back in the backfield alongside Cade Bortnum. Man. It looks like McAfee closest to the center. And Falcons going to have to burn Blank another out. timeout. Second charge, timeout of the half. On this first drive. So let's keep it right here. And let's we, we need to note what's going on here. Uh, Tips, is there just a lot of confusion going on? I think they're just trying to read the defense. But the defense isn't doing as much shifting as they were in the first half. And I think it's throwing it off. So we're trying to do like these delayed type ordeals that maybe we could change the play or you know the play called has two options they're trying to give an option down but by the time they're starting to call the second part of the play there's like three seconds left so coach young's a little frustrated right now well i can imagine and and then it makes me wonder on third and 18 what are you guys trying to do from your own 15 yard line uh, i can tell you i would run a screen i mean i, mean, I, I would think everybody well. knows that's going to happen so i don't know just call your screen play let's run with it but Yet again, you know, maybe they're seeing something or they talked about something that yeah. during the halftime, they're like, look, we're going to wait to like eight seconds to get that second play in so you need to speed up. And maybe that's just not, you know, <laughs> actually going to the field. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, you rarely see a team burn two of their timeouts in the half in their first opening drive of that half. So uh, some confusion going on for the Falcons, but Cade Bortnum drops back. There's trips left. He fires oh, middle man, of the field. Oh, man. and Yes, Barely misses Keonde Henry, who if he gets his hands on that, it's six. That was close. And, and you know they're going to find it. They're going to find that eventually this season, but it got to hone that in. Man. It was the same thing last year a little bit. You know, it, it seemed to just take a couple of these actual live games against live defenses to really get that timing down. It was a good-looking ball from Bortnum, and it was overthrown by about a yard and a half. Man, what a beautiful play that this could have been. Gary punt. Mitchell White punting out of his own end zone, and he gets it off, and it is a pretty good punt. It's going to be caught around midfield, 47-yard line. Man, Titans yeah. going to take over with a short field. They got a short field to work with. They're inside the 50. Going to be started at that 47-yard line. And, uh, man, got to see this defense rise up right here. Tanner, see Tanner Moon get involved. Let's see him come off the edge there and, and disrupt this quarterback's play real quick. You know who we haven't talked about thus far in this one? Number 61, senior defensive tackle, Humphrey Kakuba. Yep. He won defensive player of the week last week. He was all over the place. For good reason. He's a playmaker. He's a disruptor. And I got a feeling that he's going to make his presence known here in this second half as the Falcons are flying to the ball. Throw your X up. It's Xavier Rodriguez. Alongside number 21. It seems like he's Lawson the ball Nichols. Is. Lawson Nichols hobbles off the field. And on comes number 14 for the Falcons. That's Christian DeKagan. Any, anywhere the ball is, it seems like X is there. It's been that way for a few years now. Mm -hmm. He's a ball hawk. Yep. Play action, looking deep. Oh. Fires. That's to you, Tips. You should have caught it. Heck no. I'm not helping them out. <laughs> you don't got it in you no more. Yep, I ain't got that dog in him. Arrgh. Well, that was sounding like a sick puppy. It's better than the It's better seagull. than your it's chihuahua you had last week. Yeah, oh, what are you, hey, what is your, hey, hey. What is your dog noise? I'll get there. Third and 12. 8-12 to go here in the third quarter. Falcons lead 21-3. Third and 12. Ball on the 45-yard line. Falcons need a big stop here. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not third and 12. It's third down and eight. Yep, I, you know, this new math pretty hard, huh? Well, I was reading the, the scroll across from us, and they're just wrong. Quarterback drops back, fires, middle of the field, behind the intended target. And number three almost picks it there. Right? It almost takes it. Their receiver, Ramsey Metters, about is able to make a play on it. So we got a lucky. We got a little lucky there. 
Sorry. That's the second time something's almost hit him in the hands and he's, he's bobbled it. <laughs> Sorry about the confusion. What a disjointed call that was. It really was. But, hey, <laughs> you don't let him get anywhere. You got force fourth down. Defense, that's a win right there. That's a W. Absolutely. Look at that. Force a three and out on a short field. Get the offense back out there. Got some dogs on defense. That art, art. That's the best dog you've done in the last three art, years. Art, art. That's terrible. Art. That's a seal. Punt. He gets it away. It's like a dog It's going to be a high punt and – all the Falcons are going to get out of the way oh, of that one, and it's going to take a Titan bounce down towards the 10-yard line. Keeps on rolling down towards the 12, and I think that's where the Falcons are going to take over at their own 12-yard line. So 7.55 here to go in the third quarter. Falcons up 21-3. They only have one timeout left in the second half because in their first drive of this second half, they had to burn two of them. And uh, there, there was some confusion. I, we... we detailed it pretty heavily that you know the Falcons were trying to adjust to the defense once they lined up so we'll Stack see if it that up continues again. the play clock currently sits at 20 seconds we'll see if they get some quicker snaps as oh. this is going to be a halfback draw Dylan Brockle takes it up the middle picks up three or four That's yards a successful gain right there get you a few yards keep chipping away it's like golf you've got to chip it just chip it in just tap it in mm -hmm. just chip 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 it's like the worst part of your game the chip. Mm -hmm. You don't know my game. Unfortunately, mine's off the tee box. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that. Thanks for chiming in there, Tips. Yeah, I felt left out, so. <laughs> Stacked formation. We'll see what these defensive backs do as they don't really have an answer for it. The ball's Man. thrown slightly behind Brett Young, but thank goodness it was as number 27 for the Titans, Mason Parsons, comes up, and if that ball was on target, could have nearly been intercepted. Well, Brett Young still almost makes a play on it, which is crazy. So, want to see what they run here now with being third down and six to go. They're going trips right. It's McAfee. It's Jack Bryant. It's Brett Young on the right side. Keonde Henry at the top of your screen on the line of scrimmage. Ten seconds on that play clock. They got to get this in quick if you're going to call this play. You got one time six, out left. five, four, three. Two, and there's the snap. Play action. Bortnum rolling right, looking, firing. He's got McAfee. McAfee. Man. Gets down to the 33-yard line. It's going to be a first down for the Falcons. That right there is called a little pitch and catch, if you will. Just throws it right, floats it right over that defender. And McAfee's able to bring it in. Going to move the chains. New set of downs, Smitty. Great composure mm -hmm. from number 13, your senior quarterback, Cade Bortnum. Man, right over that defender in this replay it showed us. Did a fantastic job of being patient and letting the game come to him. Right where you needed that ball to be. False start. One step forward, two steps back from time to time. False start. Offense number 75. Mm. Five-yard penalty. That's his first, first one of the season, though. That's his first one of the season. And that's going to be the sophomore, Liam Brownfield. This is a sophomore starting on varsity. If that's his first penalty, you'll take it. So what was? First and 10 from the 32 turns into first and 15 from the 27. 6.40 to go in the third quarter. 21-3, Falcons on top. Keonde Henry and Sam McAfee at the top of your screen. Ethan Blakesley, the sniffer back. Handoff, oh, Dylan Brockles, and he finds a lane. Trips on a shoelace, a and he's going to pick up eight – or I'm sorry, he's going to pick up about 13 yards. There's going to be some mustard on that lettuce, Smitty. We got some mustard on the lettuce there. As we'll see what this official determines this penalty is. Face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 47 of the defense. That's 15 yards from the end of the run. That'll do it. Down. Hey, that'll gain you some yards. It's free. We like free yards. There we go. It's like free real estate. It's like free real estate. Correction. Fouls on number 46 of the defense. I was going to say, I don't have a 47 up here. That's Nick Morrow. Nick Morrow, uh, pretty good little player for the Centennial Titans. He had a sack last week against Richardson. Is it Morrow or Moreau? I don't know. Might yeah. be related to Fabian. Let's you know? stop the game. They're going to clear up this Morrow, Moreau thing. <laughs> Ball start. Snap infraction. Offense number 72. Mm. Five-yard penalty. First down. Snap infraction. So 
You know what I liked right there? Ethan Blakesley just looks at him and just hit him right in the helmet and said, get in the game, man. Get it together. So they're going to lock it in right here. Here we go. Going to be first and 15. Let's see him go here. First Smitty. and 15. Falcons have the ball at midfield. Blakesley shifting from right to left. Handoff. Left side. Dylan Brockle going to get across midfield into enemy territory, and it's going to be a pickup of about 10 yards. Just keep Falcons feeding him. Going to have second down and manageable with 555 here to go in the third quarter. Hey, keep feeding him. He is fast. He is fast. When you got blocking like that in front of you, it's going to work. Brett Young, Sam McAfee at the bottom of your screen. Keonde Henry at the top. Blakesley in motion from left to right. Another handoff. Brockle, right side. Oh, he finds some, some room. Gets across the 35. Down near the 30-yard line, and it's going to be a first down for the Falcons. <laughs> he, about put, he just put Brett Young on the ground. <laughs> He's trying to block his man. He goes, get out of my way. I'll tell you what, man. It's fun watching him run. It is. He runs really hard. Mm -hmm. So does McAfee. Both of them do. And look at this. McAfee now comes in as the running back. Brockle out in the slot. I and like either it. one of those guys are just playmakers at any given moment on the field. Here's McAfee up the middle. Oh. And he's just a bowling ball. Just fires in there to the middle of the defense. He falls hit, forward for a pickup of four or five yards. He hit a wall. Still got a chunk of change there. That's what you need out of a guy like that. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you – because he can bust a big play. Oh, yeah. But, man, he is consistently going to get you those four yards, five yards, whatever it is. Looks like we might have had an equipment malfunction here for number 42. Mm. And he's going to have to come out and – I haven't seen the number of their replacement yet, but – yeah, who knows. We'll get him. Brockle in at the slot here at the bottom of your screen. Brett Young, the receiver. Keonde Henry at the top. Blakesley in at the sniffer back position. Sam McAfee. The running back, and it's going to oh. be a little reverse, a little trickery. McAfee some green up grass. the middle. Green McAfee grass. breaks the tackle at the 10, and McAfee is going to score. Touchdown, Falcons. He refuses to go down, refuses to be caught, and, man, what a great, great misdirection. Um, great fake to, to Brockle, and what a great touchdown. These guys run so hard, Smitty. And you just love to see that, especially if you're Coach Young, that you're able to weather that storm of starting slow in the second half. You call two timeouts in your first drive, and you never get past your own 20-yard line. Your defense then comes out short field, three and out, offense back out. They do that. It's awesome. It is. It really is. This is an exciting team, and the kick is up, and the kick is no good. I mean, this referee just ran in there, though, right before they snapped the ball. Yeah, that was a strange play. And Mitchell White is very confused on what's going on. Everyone seems to be a little, a little confused. Nonetheless, I'm going to go ahead and throw it to break. We'll be right back. 27-3, Falcons on top. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. We'll be right back with more Lake Dallas Falcon football from the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast. Hey, Falcon fans. Your local community bank, Point Bank, would like to invite you to its location right here in Corinth to get your very own Lake Dallas school logo debit card. It's free when you open up a new personal checking account. To sweeten the deal, Point Bank will make a $25 donation to your choice of participating booster clubs. Point Bank is a member of FDIC Bank. Good luck, Falcons. If I had a million dollars, if I had... We're back here, Falcon fans. Your Falcons are leading this one 27 to 3. Live from the stars. It's going to be a little pooch kick here to the middle. And fielded by a Titan who's going to take it a little bit to the 40. And a little bit of green grass going to drop it there at the 45-yard line. Brought down by number 12 for the Falcons, Jack Bryant. Got a few shout-outs here. Ron Hughes tuning in. Jonathan Idar. Sarah Wooten. And Christopher Adams. Christopher Adams watching all the way from Port Neches, Texas. Home of the PNG Indians. He says, go Nathan Giamo. Number 56. So there we go. Love to hear it from you Falcon fans out there. Let us know where you're from if you're out of state, out of the country. I know this broadcast is worldwide, so let us hear from you. Yep. Global. Harry Stewart takes it right side. He crosses the 50. 
Man, he is a downhill runner too. And it's, it's impressive the way these Falcons have been able to shut him down for most of the game. We've got 4.22 here to go in the third quarter. 27-3 is your score. Falcons find themselves on top. They're on the right side of this one. Mm. All start. That's, That's going to back him up. Back. It's going to take second manageable. Second three with the ball in the 48. Now All start. Offense back number him 67. up five yards. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Second down and eight. Now, chat, be sure to stay tuned. We do have a tips nugget down. coming up in the fourth quarter. We absolutely do. In the early goings of the fourth quarter, we'll be throwing it down to our sideline reporter, Adam Tips, and he will bring you a piece of football information that you may not have already known. So stay tuned. Motion. Tight end in motion, left to right. Handoff up the middle. It's Harry Stewart, and he's swallowed up by a gang of Falcon tacklers. The way they reacted, it looks like he might have put the ball on the turf, but I think they were just a little overzealous on that. Yeah, one. he tried to show they're going to go right, and he tries to change up direction and come that mid, and Falcons just swallow him up right there. There's nothing there for him. Big Harry Stewart is just tough to bring down. Man, that big Harry Stewart, he's got it going on. But he is, he is tough to bring down, but then Falcons have been able to contain the Harry Stewart tonight. Two receivers on the bottom of your screen. Looks like Centennial going with a tight end as they so often do. Drops back, a lot of pressure. He's gonna scramble, try to make a move, and he's hit hard! But I think completed there might be a the hold pass too. the tight end. I think there might be a hold there, Smitty. I mean, he had Harry Stewart down the flat for a second on the right side of the field there, but man. If there's a replay, try to, try to get the replay board, Josh, if there's a replay. If they show this hit, Falcon fans, you're gonna wanna see it again because it was one of the bigger hits that we've seen. Holding. Offense number 60. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. So it's fourth down. Falcons yeah, bring up they're show that. another big fourth down. Oh, yeah, they are. We might see it. Try to see if you can zoom in on that for the Falcon fans at home. Look at this. Oh, oh they're, they're not going to show it. I'm going to tell you right now, I couldn't quite get the number of who did it, but my goodness. They laid the wood. They laid the wood. The Falcon defense came ready to play much like they did last week. It's just a fun, fun unit to watch Ooh, as this that's ball gonna... tumbles end over end towards the Centennial sideline. And I think the Falcons might take over somewhere around their own 21, 22-yard line. It's going to be on the 19th, Smitty. They gave him a weird spot on that. Huh. That is a weird spot. Yeah, 19, 21, close. Close, yeah, right? This new math's really hard for us. That's tough. We're doing our best. 3.20 to go here in the third quarter. 27-3 is your score. Falcon offense doing a great job. They've been cooking. They've scored four out of their last five drives, scored touchdowns on four out of their last five drives. We'll see what they can do here. As I'm, they more bring impre I'm impressed with this defense too, man. Tight end in motion. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. It's McAfee. He's got room, and he's going to have enough for a Falcon. First down. He was carrying him with him for a little bit. I'm impressed with this defense, Smitty, for the Falcons. Though. I mean, holding them to three points after a big game. The reason they got these three points because of fir those first drive jitters where Harry Stewart's able to get down in the flat and, and, and get down into the red zone. But other than that, they have really, really risen up and played a great game. Absolutely. No, no, not, you can't say enough about them. Mm -hmm. And this offense is cooking as well. Yep. Handoff. It's McAfee once again. He oh, finds he's room. Got... He makes a man miss at the 38-yard line, and he's brought down near the 40. Nearly enough for another first down. I think it's going to be. No, they're signaling. That's going to move the chains. Move the chains. That's move enough em. for a Falcon. First down. On the night so far. Dylan Brockle, the leading rusher for the Falcons. 120 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. Cade Bortnum, 12 of 17 with 116 yards. Sam McAfee has seven carries for 50 yards and a touchdown. Brett Young, four catches, 36 yards. Keonde Henry, three catches, 43. Little misdirection here. It's Brockle. Oh, he bounces goodness. outside. And what a block by number 75, Liam Brownfield. I think he gets more if Keonde's able to hit that block right there. The yeah, edge. but it looks like he was kind of juked out because yeah. uh, Brockle looked like he was going to go up by the numbers, and he ended up bouncing outside. So he kind of yeah. just got juked out right there. But 
Yeah, I think they definitely could have gone even more of a next level if Kiana could have made a little bit of contact there. Still a big gain. I mean, we're, we're sitting here. Do I sound point. way better? Dude, you sound great. All yeah. right, all right. Shotgun formation. Another handoff up the middle. It's Brockle who makes a man miss, bouncing it outside to the right. He's going to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Is it enough for a Falcon first down? I think they're going to stop forward progress with a pickup of eight yards. And this Falcon offensive line is starting to just win the battle every single play. They're at war right now, and they are marching. Looks like Keonde got another warning like we saw last week with being too aggressive on his blocks. You know what? I think as a coach, you take that every time, right? I mean, I think so. I mean, it's the third quarter, just now getting a warning. Go for it. Here we go. Quick slant pass. Keonde Henry Speaking catches it. He's Speaking inside the 20. Henry. He breaks Speaking the tackle. He's inside Henry. the 10. Speaking He's going to get Henry. inside. Oh, oh they're, they're marking call him, him at the one-yard line. First and goal for the Falcons after a huge pickup. 37-yard pass from Cade Bortnum to Keonde Henry. I'm watching the replay right now. I'll let you know what happened. As it looks like, oh, he was. I think, I think he, he was, was down at right the one. There. Good call by that referee. I wanted it for him. Kate Borden, I'm going to push it across himself. Quarterback sneak. Go on, Goose. The Falcons keep pouring it on here well, in Bristol. That's a bad flag. This might, this could be a game ender. Game ender. Yeah, he's done. Who is? 54 threw up through a haymaker. Oh, no. William Osborne. Mm, that's your starting left tackle. Yeah, you don't do that. You don't do that. So it looks like, I mean, is that going to, is the touchdown going to count? It's after the play, so okay. I think the decision is do we do they do, want to do the penalty on, like, assess the penalty right here on the extra point or on the kickoff? And there's a chance we go for two, so. Touchdown. Okay. Dead ball, personal foul, number 54. That player, number 54 of the offense. That player's been disqualified. Yeah, uh, you called the tips. I didn't actually see that. Yeah, he stood up. I mean, he did kind of get cheap shotted, but he turned around and gave an ultimate cheap shot, so. Can't it, have that. Yeah, the that's coach unfortunate. Coach has the elected to take the foul on the kickoff. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. Uh, well, next man up. Next man this, up. Yeah, we're gonna get to see some reps from somebody else. Great play by the offense. Let's not let that dark cloud loom over us. As the Falcons now have a 33 to three lead with under a minute to play here, and that kick is up, and that kick is good. Falcons lead 34-3 with 53 seconds to go in the third. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. All right. We all know keep how it here. crazy these storms can be in Texas. And if you or someone you know has been impacted by any of these storms, call Russell Lorenz with Lorenz Contracting, an accredited business with a five-star rating and six-year warranties. Lorenz Contracting is your place to call for all of your roofing needs. Call 940-395-9413 for a free quote today. A great smile leaves a lasting impression and at Corinth Orthodontics, that's exactly what they specialize in. Call Corinth Orthodontics at 940-321-3919. And don't forget, your smile is their passion. A great smile leaves a lasting impression, and at Corinth Orthodontics, that's exactly what they specialize in. Call Corinth Orthodontics at 940-321-3919, and don't forget, your smile is their passion. It's their passion, folks. We are back. 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. 34-3 is your score. Falcons on top of the Frisco Centennial There's a boot. Titans. And he's going to kick it to Harry Stewart. That's Harry somebody. Stewart taking it across oh the 40. Boy. He's across the 45 oh. and hit hard. 
by Jalen Brooks. Hey, number 23 though. Flag on Anthony. the field. We got some more extracurricular going on. Anthony Colonna helps on that one. What do you see, Tips? They're headhunting now, the referees are. But, I mean, I don't really like this. It was like any other type of celebration after you make a big play. You stand up and he gives a shoulder, like just a little shoulder thing. So yeah, I didn't see I, anything. I, it is what it is. I mean, <laughs> it's unfortunate, but so we just got to get coach to set everybody down. I know it's big time. We're, we have a pretty good lead now going into the fourth quarter here soon. So, But just set everybody down. Let's just finish this game out. Yeah. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number white, number two on the white. 15 yards, first down. So, I mean, look at these penalty yards because they took the one after the touchdown and assessed it on the kickoff. All right, so there's 15. Then you take that one, there's another 15. So there's 30-yard swing. The Titans, no pun intended on the swing, are going to take over at the 38-yard line. Very short field. I mean, technically, it was in one play because one of them was after a play. Exactly. So, it, it, I mean, it's, it's getting crazy. This is what Coach Young was so frustrated with last week. Oh! Big-time play there. Humphrey Kakuba and Tanner Moon taking care of Harry Stewart in the backfield. Now, get back to the line. Don't let, him, don't let him flag you on this. Let's keep going. Unbelievable play there. Humphrey Kakuba absolutely blew it up. Tanner Moon cleaned it up. Fantastic job there. And they are. They're, it's hard to not be excited, right? You're in the exact place where the Dallas Cowboys practice to lose in the first round of the playoffs every year. Now that that seems this like, is exciting. Smitty, how many times have the Browns been in the playoffs in the last Back to the game, Cameron. Years? Ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Here's the snap. This might be the last play. The third quarter intercept. Oh, oh in and my. out of the hands of Jacari and Jackson. There was so much happening at that, that line. Did you see everybody fall down? <laughs> I did. And that'll lead us into the fourth fourth quarter, folks. I think. Is there one second on the clock? Is that what people are saying? All right, we're going no, to go to the switching. fourth quarter. You're good. You're good. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Lake Dallas football fans, the we've got a winning lineup of sponsors, including Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting, local business-minded teammates supporting the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the trenches to the end zone, they're in the game. Nitrogen services, heavy machinery, hydraulics, and equipment rentals. They've got every position covered. Alpha and Omega Contract Sales and Consulting, playing their part in the playbook of community support. Are you ready for some thrilling touchdowns, heart-stopping tackles, and game-changing plays? It's football season in Lake Dallas, and excitement is in the air. And when it comes to Lake Dallas football, there's one name you can trust to find your perfect touchdown-worthy home. Sanders Realty, proud sponsor of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Hey, Falcon Faithful, are you protected? Well, if you're not, give Mark Tucker a call from Allstate Insurance 24-7 coverage, and he'll get you helped out on your auto, home, and anything else you might need. Give him a call at 940-321-1881. Touchdowns in support, that's what Lake Dallas football is all about. Proudly sponsored by Lorenz Contracting, your trusted general contractor and roofing experts. For top-notch construction and roofing solutions, visit Lorenz Contracting at russroofing.com. That's R-U-S-S, roofing.com. We're back, start of the fourth quarter, 34-3, Falcons on top. Incomplete pass to start things out. Got some dogs on defense. That'll bring up fourth down. Art. So, like I said, 34-3. This offensive unit is going to stay out onto the field for the Titans. We'll go over some stats here shortly. I mean, this Falcon defense has only given up what is it, 130 yards total in yeah. this game, and they're, they're running back as a Division I uh, commit. I like what I'm seeing out of these boys. Mm -hmm. A lot of pressure. Oh, he's able to step up. He's able to scramble, and Riley Griffin oh. able to bring him down with the help of, look like Tanner Moon. <laughs> what are you owing? I thought they were about to hit him hard, but they didn't. They, they, they thought they were about to lay <laughs> him in the ground. He just yelled, oh, in the middle. Well, it looked like he was about to spin out of that, and somebody was coming up behind him. I was like, oh, here we go, and they did not hit him like I thought they were going to do. So let me take back that O real quick, folks. I'll save it for a rainy day. What's wrong with him, Tips? I have no idea, man. <laughs> I'm just over here <laughs> laughing. I had to turn my mic tips, off. Tips, why don't man. you go? Why don't you go hug the Falcon back there? Huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go get a go get a selfie with the Falcon, Tips, and send it to us. Tweet it out. Here in two minutes, 
We're going to be giving it over to our beloved sideline reporter, Adam Tips, for a tips nugget. That's a piece of football information that you may not already know. But here's a patient, patient run there by Sam McAfee. He's going to pick up seven yards. And that'll get you some yards. At tips nugget. Oh, we're going right now. We're going now, Tips. I, I just wasn't ready. Oh, my goodness gracious. All right, so this one's actually more of like a little trivia type ordeal. Here we go. Uh, so way back in 2003, somebody famously said, we'll take the ball and we're going to score. So if you could tell me who that was and what the end result was. Sam McAfee is going to push forward for a Falcon first down. So tips, or I'm sorry, yeah, that was McAfee. Now try to do an impersonation of how they said it. We'll take the ball. We're going to score. That sounded really good. If you know, you know. Who said that in Comment 2003? Away. Comment away in the chat. I'll be monitoring it periodically. First one to type in the correct answer is going to get a high five at the next home game from our sideline reporter, Adam Tips. Oh, class of 1993 in the house. As McAfee is going to scramble forward for a pickup of a couple. What is he talking about? Oh, it's so in the chat. In the chat. Cameron doesn't understand oh. that this is, a, this is an audio medium from time to time. And he has to explain what he's doing. Sorry, guys. So he looked over at the screen and saw that Jonathan Idar said, Class of 1993 in the house 30 years ago. We were also on the radio. Chad Thiessen was our quarterback. So shouts out to you. I know Chad Thiessen. Good uh, fire marshal in our fair bird, I believe, for a long time. So, uh, yeah, shout out to you. And we got some people that know the answer to this, Tips. Tragic. What was the oh, end result? Ball what? is tipped into the hands of Brett Young. It's going to be a catch. Great concentration by that young man. It's going to bring up third down and short for the Falcons. Once again, say the question, Tips. Who famously said, we'll take the ball and we're going to score? No, you got to do the voice. Oh. We'll take the ball we're going to score. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, you sold it as it looks like Drew Smith, maybe our former What's cameraman, up, is going to get a free high five from Adam Tips at the next game because he said it first. Because mm. that'll be an incomplete pass, bring up fourth down for the So Falcons. let's ask Cameron. Cameron, do you know the answer? I do. I think he's been looking at the screen the whole time. I guarantee oh, you so he's he cheating. Not know. He's cheating. It is. Go ahead, Tips. Matt Hasselbeck. 2003 Matt. wild card game. He threw a pick, by the way. So he did, in fact, help a team win. It just wasn't his. Wasn't it a pick six? Indeed. Oh, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. Someone corrected me. It was, <laughs> yeah, I got the names mixed up. It was not Drew Smith. It was Gavin Coleman. Thank you for the correction on the chat. <laughs> I Great love punt. that sounder so much. Great punt. Now hold up, ball. This is a tips nugget. Oh, oh, he might have got there. Oh. oh, the Falcons almost able to make it happen. Great effort there. Keonde. Keonde Henry, Brett Young, and McAfee were running down. And a 34-3 matchup with 10 minutes to go in the fourth, fourth quarter. That is awesome to see starters and big-time players giving it their all on punt team. They're excited to be out there. You can tell they're having fun playing, Smitty. Yeah, that's awesome. So, Gavin Coleman, if you make your way down to the sideline for the next home game, you are going to get a nice high five. Maybe from a side napkin. Aim for the elbow. That's all I can say. Aim for the elbow. Perfect every time. Thank you all for playing, and thanks for tuning in for real. We love interacting with you guys on the chat. It makes it a lot of fun for us, especially when the Falcons are just getting after it like this. We run out of things to talk about when it's 34 to 3, especially Cameron does. He, he runs out of things to talk about in the first quarter sometimes. I think it's not funny. It's going to be a handoff left side. Sometimes it feels like he shows up to the game with nothing. He's got nothing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> hey, we love you, man. We're just giving you a hard time. <laughs> That's incredible. So there are some starters still in there, of course. You know, Xavier Rodriguez, Tanner Moon, Humphrey Kakuba were in there. Got some new faces in there, though. We've got senior Peyton Stewart playing defensive back down here. Yeah. Yeah, we got a new defensive front. Number 15 is in there. Number Bryant Buchanan. Cole in Ingram. Defensive tackle. Cole Ingram out there, defensive back. For safety. 57 up front. Alex Hall. He's a big boy playing a little D tackle. And off left side. Uh, whole, the whole defense got in on that tackle. And it looks like number 19. 
Harry Stewart's not in on this drive. They put him. They put him no, out. No, I got. I got on my uh, chart here. 19 is Terrence Livingston. I don't know if that's correct or not. So I apologize to the defensive end on the bottom of our screen here. Yeah, they got Harry Stewart over here sitting on the bench. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all new guys. They're going with their twos, except their quarterback. It's going to be a handoff right side. And number two and number 25, that's Corbin Bailey and Jalen Brooks making the tackle. Lincoln Snyder was involved on that one as well, Smitty. Great effort from these twos. So. Yeah. Man, I love when these guys get, get in here and get to play because it's a long season. Yeah. It's a long season, and at some point, somebody's going to have to step up and make a play when it, ha when it counts. Not when it's 34 to three in week two in an on district game. These reps matter a lot because you're gonna need one of these guys at some point down the road in a big district game and to get them reps out here is important. Man, this, this, this running back here, he's got a little bit of quickness to him. Yeah, we were watching film la or the other night, Cameron, and he came in and he was doing yeah. he was doing fine. So I mean, it could have just been a really bad defensive scheme with whoever they were playing last week, to where they were just able to run the ball, you yeah. know, all over the place. But but yeah, he he looked pretty good last week too. So I'm not surprised he's getting getting some yards here. Yeah, a little over seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter of this one. Falcons lead 34-3. As 19 chasing him down. Terrence Livingston. I got Terrence Livingston on my roster too. I thought you said he was injured before this game. No, no, not him. That, that was number 18. Okay. Yep, that was number 18, Bryce Thurman. My apologies, Terrence. Great play there. Yeah, Terrence Livingston is highlighted on ours for some reason. We do not know the reason for the highlight, but we will get to the bottom of that by next week. <laughs> we will? You going to do a little investigative I'm going to do, do a deep dive. <laughs> An investigation, if you will, Harvey. So as this game winds down a little bit, as we approach the, you know, three, four minute mark, uh, he just goes down there. The uh, official tackle was made by number 23, Anthony Colonna. A little odd my, 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 my Colonna. <laughs> right? There we go. Now we're, my, we're my. <laughs> Cameron, are you a singer? Because nope. you kind of hit that note. Yeah, never, dude, I think you might, have a, you might have a career in show business. Never done that. show business, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just stopping us down. <laughs> oh, I love it. Here we go. Timeout Centennial. We need a reset, as they do. We'll step aside. Yeah, we do. Falcons up 34-3 with six minutes to go. We'll be right back. You're listening to the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. Hey, Falcon fans. Drew here. I'm currently sitting in the booth enjoying the all-new Smokehouse Barbecue Bacon Sandwich from our local Chick-fil-A. Their close location on Kensington Square on Swisher Road in Corinth Makes it easy to hop in your car or ride your bike. So why wait? Head over to Chick-fil-A and remember to try the Chick-fil-A One app. Available on Android and the iOS app store. Eat more chicken, Falcons. Drive the excitement of Lake Dallas Falcon football with James Wood Auto Park. Proud sponsors of the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. From the field to the road, they are all about top performance. James Wood Auto Park, the driving force of the Lake Dallas Falcon football. 606 to go here in the fourth quarter. Falcons up big, 34-3. It's a deep ball. Oh. Overthrown him. Overthrew him, if you will. You know, it's probably thank a you, good thing you. they did that, because I was on my phone. I was about to get run over. I know, too. <laughs> about to get it. I, that would have been awesome. Honestly, I would have paid money to see that. Look, oh, did you make? Oh, you almost made so the jumbo trot. That, that was Coach Hill right there, so I'm right beside him. G new goal tips, get on the jumbo trot. Coach Hill. You remember Coach Hill? Yeah, yeah. Is that him right to the right yeah. of you? He's right here. Oh, yeah, he knows me. He was a great history teacher. Go confirm that he knows Smitty. Probably doesn't. Is this punt is going to be booted? Oh. Fielded by Xavier Rodriguez. He crosses the 20, crosses oh. the 30. Got the some blockers. Got some blockers. Midfield. He's got, got the green putter in front of him. Oh, He man. makes the putter miss. He's oh, inside he's the 20. Go. He's got to go. He's down to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Falcons. Xavier Rodriguez. Let's see it, Tips. Throw up the X. That's the first one of the year for him on punt return. And, man, he's got it. 
He's got that it factor to him as a punt returner. That's awesome. He's a linebacker. He's a punt returner. Put him in a receiver and see what he can do, you know? Absolutely. That is fun to watch. I'm going to put Rodriguez. ATH, athlete, next to him. ATH. Great job there by that punt team. Getting it done. 40 to 3 is your score. Falcons pouring it on. As this kick is up. And that kick is good. So Xavier Rodriguez taking it to the house. We'll keep it right here. We got a lot of Falcon fans tuning in here on the chat. John Bell watching from outside of Philadelphia. My son is one of the Lake Dallas band directors. Love listening to you guys. You do an excellent job. Made me LOL several times. I, I know, Tips and I are uh, yeah, pretty funny. Uh, we're, we're comedy. Cameron, he's just here. Cameron. Appreciate him. He's, just, he, he's a little puppet. <laughs> oh, Tips, that's where I'm just go. kidding. I'm kidding. Hey, by the way, you ready for the sushi, guys? Or? Drew Smith checking in. I mean, you did get the question right, Drew, and I will save you some Chick-fil-A. I will. Jonathan Idar, <laughs> 1993. Coach Scott Head was his defensive coach. And look at him now. He says, we love you, Coach Head. And we do. We do here on the Lake Dallas Quarterback Club broadcast. One of the nicest guys talks to me every game. <laughs> yeah, tells you to move. Yeah, tells you. <laughs> He's like, hey, uh, we need you to take a step back. Mitchell White set to kick off with five and a half minutes here to go in this one. Falcons up 41-3. Live from the star in Frisco. Tackle made by number two, Jalen Brooks. Oh, we got, we got a little fight going on there. Oh, here. Travis Brewer's helmet gets ripped off. And this, this could get a little ugly here. Thank goodness everyone separates, gets away. As Travis Brewer not happy. Yeah, number 12 stood up and he really initiated that. Travis Brewer, good job of him not to retaliate. Yeah, yeah, good job. Good self-control there by the Falcons. We'll see what the call is. I really hope the, uh, the guy who did it first gets caught. That's what they say. The guy who does it first doesn't get caught. The guy who retaliates gets caught. Yeah, but I think the helmet being thrown across the ground might be a little bit of a tell. But in reality, I think they'll both get penalties here. Yeah, yeah, they could. Offsetting. Yeah, but it would. St I mean, it still counts with a little scuffle like that. So. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 12 on Centennial. 15 yards. Ooh. First down. I like Go. it. Good, good, good. Great self-control, Travis Brewer. Good job, young man. Good job. Right, and he, he showed on the sideline he was upset through that helmet, but hey, no, he was do it anywhere, do it there. And I'm, I mean, I'm sure he's probably going to gonna get a bit of a talking to for just throwing your helmet like that. Like, that's kind of not what you do either. But you didn't cost your team any yards. You didn't get a penalty. You did a good job, showed some self-restraint there. And sometimes it's hard to do in these blowout games. That's well, the type of stuff that will happen in these blowout games. And uh, Javen Roberts, number 12 for – Centennial's getting a talking to right now. Is he? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, he is. There we go. Falcon Band. You can hear it. I mean, I do too. It is 41 to 3. <laughs> 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 no, but I love the chants. I, I need to go stand by the band. I forget they do so many chants. <laughs> Why don't you go get involved? Why don't you go pick up a tuba and try to play it? No, I can't do anything, dude. I, I, have, I don't have any gifts, actually, now that I think about it. I'm very ungifted. <laughs> you give out good high fives. <laughs> I got to start. I got to have that gift because I got to do that, I guess, next week? He said I do, too. Under five minutes to play here. Big hit there, number 26 and number 15. It looks Bodie, like oh, Bodie. Bodie Robkin. Bodie Robkin, dude. My middle Getting name is Bodie. That. What a great name, dude. And Bryant Buchanan. In on the tackle there. So your middle name's really Bodie? His parents must be big point break fans. Is that why, is that why you got named Bodie? No, I had an uncle named Bode. So they just threw an E on the end? My, my mother did, yes. Named him. Me, my mother and my father go, Bo D. So, I don't know. Crazy, right? 
And off up the middle, tackle made by number 22 for the Falcons, Lincoln Snyder. I figured your middle name was always Bodie from, from Point Break. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, man. You got the long hair going. I can surf. You always say weird stuff like, why be a servant to the law when you could be its master? <laughs> yeah, I, I could surf. Never surfed before in my life. I guarantee you, I guarantee I could surf if I wanted to. Every time we get meatball subs, you say make it two? I've never had a meatball sub in my life, I don't know. That's cap, bro. I, promise, cap. You, I promise you never have. Are they really that good? Yeah, they're fantastic. They freak me out a little bit. You know what's awesome about like spaghetti and meatballs? Yeah, well, the, that on a sandwich. It's pretty good. I just, they did it in my cafeteria in middle school, and they, people put too much Parmesan on it. It freaked me out. I'd never want to try one. You're scared of cheese? Who gets no, weirded out by smelt, too much Parmesan? Weird, Sound dude. off, 787, 214-787-BIRD. Give us a call. Ah! Ah! <laughs> How are we not I'm canceled? A, I'm more of a chicken parm guy. Hand off up the middle. Number 36, is. swallowing him up at the line of scrimmage. Man. That's Curran Hill. Curran Hill gets in there and just absolutely sits this running back down. That's awesome. How do you feel with the chicken parm, though, Smitty? I think that's a... What's not to like? I'm telling you. It's all there. A better sandwich. We're all there. You know, I know we're getting a little carried away. You we know, are. We're, about, a great to, we're time. about to bring it back in. But, but and for, for real, though, I mean... There's a mix of twos on Centennials, but there's a couple guys still, you know, from the starting role yeah, in that. Yeah. And we have our twos in right now, and they're still having – we're still being dominant on defense. So dominant, dominant. It, it's great for these twos to come in here and show, like, hey, you know what, if, if we're in a – we're in a pickle, and we have to throw one of you out there. We're gonna have your, we trust you now. Exactly. You're gonna need one of these guys at some point throughout the season. Look at the coverage there. That's oh, come a, on! That's, that's Great no. coverage. No, that's a flag, man. Great coverage. Way to I run think with him. He had him hooked, didn't he? Did he have him hooked, Tips? Yeah, Tips. What did you see? You were right there. Tips has got the ball actually right now. Good throw. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So basically, it wasn't that much of a hook. He just got a little too off <laughs> inside. <laughs> Defense number 27. A little too much hands. Too much hands. Yeah, he had he, he, a little too much fun with the one hand. He had the jersey pulled, and then he tried to kind of wrap over. So that's what it was. But, oh, I don't think it was going to be catchable anyway. But I guess nowadays for the whole uncatchable rule, it has to be thrown, like, out of the stadium, oh, I guess. Oh, made it screen. Really? I wasn't even looking. Dang it. <laughs> you just completely interrupted his train of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, so we got 224 here to go in the fourth quarter. 41 to three, Falcons on top. After uh, that pass interference, it's uh, first down and Whoa. 22. Driving him to the ground, Lincoln Snyder. 25 is also involved with that one. Corbin Bailey called his name a couple times tonight. You know, I missed this, but Sarah Wooten tuned in. And she has a really funny uh, line here. It says, oops, I don't know why it says Sarah, but she's here too. So it's another Wooten apparently. Uh, it's Darla, her Darla. mother. But Sarah, since she's there as well. That's a, that is an, a Sarah Wooten. It says North, she's a new tune-inner. North Texas cheer alumni. Is that right? Yep. It will be. Tune-inner. Hey, Falcons uh, going to fly. Um, according to Webster, tune-inner is someone who listens to the radio. Norm? Thanks, pal. <laughs> Hand off up the middle. Tackle made once again, number 26, making it happen, Bodie Rokin. So as you look forward from this one, Smitty, there's a lot of positives to gain on, I believe, Absolutely. as this one winds down a minute 15 left. I think that your offense kind of found that found that passing game more than they had last week. This they did. Week, and, which was great to see. Get some stats um, here. We also had a defense that, that shut down the Centennial offense. For, for most times. I mean, shut down a running back's committed to a D1 school. So if you're you're going into next week, your your confidence is through the roof and build on it and let, let's clean some things up and, and go into th week three ready to roll. Absolutely. First I mean, home game. As we, uh, yeah, for 48 seconds to go here in this one. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, we will be talking to Coach Young after the game. If you can find him, Adam, we're going to do our very best to try to get him. Uh, it would be fun to talk to him after this one. But, I mean, 376 total yards, 22 first downs for the Falcons. Cade went 14 of 22 with 160 yards. He found the end zone three times through the air last week, once on the ground. He didn't, uh, he didn't make it in on the air this week, but he did have a rushing touchdown. He ran for three times uh, for 14 yards. Dylan Brockle, the leading story in this one, 19 carries, 143 yards, three touchdowns. Boom. McAfee, 10 carries, 
59 yards. He got a touchdown as well. Brett Young, he had six targets, caught five balls, 43 yards. Jacob Ledbetter just made a big tackle. Did he? Did he? I'm he sorry, did. I was looking at the stats screen. Thank You're you for good. pointing Jacob that out. Ledbetter. And Jacob Ledbetter shouts out to you. Next week, going to going back to Falcon Field. It is. It is our first home game. Princeton at Lake Dallas. So, Gavin Coleman, you be sure to get that high five from Adam Tips. We'll be there. Big I hope to see each one of you Falcons Yeah, I'll fans. be there. I think we thought the game was over. There's still, yeah, still 10 seconds left. Get no, the ball no, no. up there. I don't think it's over. Get the flying V. We didn't, well, we didn't, we didn't think it was. Sucker. You think they thought it was, Tips? No, we no like we were out here like celebrating, uh, but there was oh. no ball being thrown out. So it just you know, <laughs> one another one of those things. We're like, hey guys, not quite to the finish line yet. Right, right. So yeah, now we're out here, wrap it up, and take I mean, this victory back to good old Lake Dallas. Absolutely. Oh, who gets to kneel it? They letting Hogan Kinney kneel it? Well, hold on there, dude. Hulk Hogan Kenny with the victory formation. And that's a win, brother. 41-3, your Falcons going to walk out of the Ford Center with a victory. They are now 2-0 on the season, and they are looking strong. I don't know about you guys, but I cannot wait for that first home game. It's going to be exciting. This defense is flying around and making plays. I think they gave up 170 yards, something like that, throughout the entire evening after really uh, looking a little shaky there in the first drive. I thought we were going to have a dogfight on our hands, and it was looking that way. They are about midway through the second quarter, and the Falcons really really took over and uh, never looked back. Foot on the gas pedal, all gas, no brakes. Man, yes. there's an energy in, to this team, I think, that they, you know, and a brotherhood that we haven't seen in a while. I mean, we saw it a little bit last year, but I think they really do enjoy playing football with each other, and that's going to really translate this season. I'm eager to see how this season plays out. Week two, going in 2-0. Get your first home game. Let's rise up. Let's go. Yeah. Let's roll. Absolutely. Falcons country. Let's fly. Let's fly. Go! I, I hey, credit, please. Please give me the credit. You got it. Yes. Give it the tips. I started half of it. You finished the rest of it. So let's take a 50 50 on this. Yeah, we're not going to. Uh, I'm better. We'll see if you can go get a word with Coach. If not, no big deal. We're going to wrap it up. I know he's shaking some hands and kissing babies after the game. So we'll see. I'm going to be really close to the band, just so you all know. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Here you go, Tips, with Coach Young. All right, Coach, big victory on a Thursday night. Oh. They're going to start playing. Yeah, I know. Our luck. So uh, Thursday night, big win, going back to Lake Dallas, 2-0. Oh. How's that feel? Oh, it feels great. I mean, I was nervous about this team. They, they, they got some, some talent. And I, when number four went down, I think it completely changed it. So, But I'm, I'm proud of them. So before the game, we were talking about defense. Your defense really has to step up and stop that big playmaker they have. And he had a really quiet night, and they ended up putting the twos in. Y'all yeah, just shut him down. How about your defense? Yeah, they played well. Played well. Uh, you know, we, we're, obviously there's going to be some mistakes that we that are, are made, but I was like, I really like the physicality of them. It was good. And then your offense. You're able to run the ball two straight weeks. Y'all are just ground and pound. You got Dylan. You got McAfee. I mean, what do you got to say about those two guys? Dylan and McAfee. Uh, what can you say? They're unbelievable. All right, we, we got a one-two punch right there. All right, we feel really good about it. And, and we got to do a lot of things to get them, uh, to get them going, get the ball in their hands in space. Okay. Thanks, coach. That's a centennial pack. I know I can't say this on air, but don't, then don't. No, don't, I'm don't cutting look. you off. I'm cutting. <laughs> okay. All right. So we're gonna get out of here, folks. Love hanging out with you guys on the chat. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, keep it coming. If you're out of town and can't make it to that first home game, let us hear from you on YouTube. Tune in on your FM dials for all you current uh, Falcon fans out there. And we will be back. Hey, that's a Falcon victory. Unhitch, the, unhitch the wagons, put the ponies in the barn. We'll see you guys later. We'll be right back with more Lake Dallas Falcon football from the award-winning Lake Dallas Quarterback Club radio broadcast.